A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Luyolo. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I do ask that you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of this journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, I'm joined by a very, very special guest. This man is one of the sharpest footballing brains in world football, and he is the coach of Mamelodi Sundowns. He goes by the name of Coach Rolani Mukwena. Coach, how are you doing? Very well, thanks, Lerela. How are you? Uh, all is well, Coach. Very well, thank you. Thank you very much for accepting the invite. Um, I look forward to this conversation that we're about to have. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've watched quite a couple of your shows and uh, uh, I was really honored by the invitation. Oh, thank well, you. That feels great. <laughs> but before we get into it, um, yeah. I've, I've got something for you, Coach. So, oh. yeah. Oh, wow. um, this is a. Yeah. A so, surprise. so part of what I do here is yeah. um, to look at the journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, this is where the journey all started. Oh, yeah. At the age of eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. And um, yeah, yeah, a yeah, certain yeah. Mrs. Webster. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. your mother decided that hey, this young man can be a great lawyer. Yeah, but yeah. But you decided yeah. otherwise. I'd like for you to tick the box <laughs> that you picked. I, I, I actually went for this box. <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went. I went for sports science instead of law. Yeah, I, and I have no regrets. <laughs> you got no regrets. I got no regrets. <laughs> no, I really like that coach. But anyway, coach, um, let's 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 take a trip down memory lane. Yeah. So let's just rewind. Yeah. So growing up in Orlando West, yeah, yeah, what yeah. was that like? And especially considering then the influence of your father and Brache. <sighs> And it was not only just the family influence, I think it was uh, the neighborhood influence. I mean, uh, Orlando West was uh, one of the only, and in fact, even today, historically, is, is the only township where you have a street that has three Nobel Peace Prize winners. Yeah. So generally, the, the, the area of Orlando West has been synonymous with, uh, with uh, breeding, skilled, uh, high-level leaders in, in different spheres of, 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 of life uh, from a political sense, from a football sense, and, 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 and then made rich by uh, the sense that around Orlando you've got Orlando East, where Pirates is predominantly from, mm -hmm. which was the area of my grandfather and, 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 and the, the influence that he had on Pirates. And then you move a couple of kilometers and you go across, you go to Pefeni, which is where Kaiser Chiefs is. Mm -hmm. And that's very close also to Orlando West. And then you move a little bit to, to the West, I think, the West, which is Dube. Uh, and that's where Morocco swallows it. So you've got three of the biggest uh, clubs in South African history oldest clubs in South African history that come from that type of area. So it was always an area that uh, was, was a football area, uh, but also an area that, that uh, has, has given life to uh, Winnie Mandela, the late, the late uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, Desmond Tutu, who come from the same street, that Villagazi street. And then you've got many others that were, were, were from there. I mean, uh, Dr. Patrice Mutsipa grew up in Orlando East. So if you think about all the big names or in different political, medical, uh, football even, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very rich area. Mm. And considering the, the family structure that you, you came from, um, you wind up then pursuing football. Yeah. So which position did you play? I played centre back. I, I played as a centre back, and to be honest, I wasn't so bad. You know, I, when I look back today, I, I I say to myself, had I had a coach like me, I think I would would have been a lot better. You know, and I yeah. think I could have played professional football. But God, God wanted me to be the coach that I needed, mm -hmm. and so every day I try to be to be the coach that I think. I would have loved to have, mm. and that's that's uh, that's what drives me. Mm. So at the age of fourteen, you start coaching. Yeah. 
and you're playing as well. Yeah. What was that juggling act like? Was it, it was fun because at the end it was not serious in the beginning. In the beginning, when I look back, it was not a serious thing because it happened coincidentally. Mm-hmm. So I arrived at Matado training grounds. Matado was uh, the ground that we played football on. He said Dube, it's still there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and an area that uh, even people like Tokyo Sukhwale have come from that area, he said Dube, are people that have inquired about trying to develop that, that field and make it something better. And, 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 and I think that would be something I'd love to see happening for, for Matado because I think uh, that area is very rich, you know, with regards to the the quality of people it's produced, the type the type of um, players that uh, Mo Flavor, for an example, the, yeah. the DJ, he he grew up in that area. He played on that field, you know. We he played for Arsenal when I played for for Tube Fulham, yeah. and um, so quite a lot of uh, has happened uh, in that area. So I arrived for training that day, and and the under thirteens. We're just sitting, you know, and as the captain of the under 17s, I was 14 years old, I was yeah. playing for the under 17s, and I was captain of the under 17s. So I used to regularly come early, mm-hmm. go fetch the balls from the coach's house, carry the, the training equipment, and then we'd wait for the coach. But that day, the, the under 13s had no coach, mm-hmm. and they were sitting there, these poor boys just sitting there. And I, I decided to, to, to take the balls that I had brought from the coach's house, mm-hmm. and I set up a training session. The passing and then small sided game and just shouting and it was it was, it was uh, yeah I was pretending to coach you yeah. know because I didn't know what it was like to coach but I think I think I started getting used to it and mm. then started feeling more comfortable actually than being on the pitch mm. and uh, it gave me a lot more responsibility and uh, I just started I just started loving coaching from them mm. and and what was that like because you instructing your yeah, peers yeah what, what was that like well they were younger than me slightly younger but but the, of course even now you look at them there are some of them are, are grown men now mm-hmm. and I've still got a very good relationship with a lot of them and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very proud of, of of the human beings that they've turned out to mm-hmm. me I've got a, a kid called uh, Bravo now Mosala who, who played for that that group and he is is uh, in uh, mercurial engineering, and uh, he 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 lives in Saudi Arabia now. And but he's just an an exceptional gentleman, you know. A lot of those boys that were in that group and that that I had to carry for a couple of years yeah. have turned out not just to be good football players, some of them, but most of them have become good human beings. Mm-hmm. And that is something that uh, I think. I I am very proud of. I'm very proud of uh, the the human being that the Tato Teledi has, has has become. I'm very proud of the human being that Neo Musala has been. Um, I'm very proud of uh, a lot of these kids that uh, I coached at that age. And and um, even though Tato Teledi is, is still playing, but uh, these are players that have got a very. Uh, I mean, there's a Silo Mutaung also. Who who's a manager in the way he works and holds a very high, respectful position, you know, and they're all members of of, of the community in 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 in, in Orlando, Dube, and they they make incredible contributions to the next generation. And so, when we started off, I I kept saying to them that we we want to produce good human beings mm. before we produce even good football players. We want to produce good human beings because. The reality is you are only a footballer for two hours in a day. The, the match is 90 minutes. The training session cannot be longer than 90 minutes. And depending on the number of training sessions, the reality is that's the only amount of time you have devoted fully to the sport and to the, to the game. Yeah. But after that, you're integrated into society. Mm. And therefore, it's not about the type of player you are in your life. It's about the human being that you are. Yeah. Because you spend the 22 hours uh, reintegrated into society and people don't remember you for what you're doing on the pitch. They actually see you for how you carry yourself Mm -hmm. and and how you speak and and how you respect others and how you integrate yourself and move in a space where you can help to to build society. Mm -hmm. And uh, and today when I look back at at the type of football players that Black Poison has produced, I, I admire because 
uh, what started off as a as a as a dream, as a as a as a coincidental occurrence. Uh, when you look back, you then get a feeling that um, it was part of an ordained sort of storyline, uh, where the pieces of the puzzle were being put together, and only later, maybe not even now, even though now some of the dots when you join the story makes a bit more sense. Mm. But but the reality is there's still so much more to do in that space, and uh, I, I suppose there's so much more to achieve and. We keep working on, on what we have. Today we, we sit having produced so many professional football players and, and we are uh, one of the only amateur clubs that has produced as many professional football players as we have. Mm. And not a lot of people talk about how, the history of this club and what it's done in Black Poison. So when you look at that space and you say, Mpoma Kola plate, Swissomieni plate, Ketowake Masuku plate for Black Poison. Mm. Uh, Malevan played, Colum Lambo played, uh, Brighton Mshongo, who was a goalkeeper at Vits and Pirates, he played. Uh, Jabu Pule played for Black Poison, you know. Um, uh, Sipo Mietu played for Baroka, Linda Shiva, uh, Siabonga Zulu played for Black Poison. And now you, you have even Abokakri Soshezi, who's playing for Tomati, played for Black Poison, and, mm. and he's now in the national team for the under 23s. And uh, we just continue KG uh, Polokwane City. So we just continue with this thing, and I and I think when I look at what we have even now, it's incredible that the the amount of talent that is in that team. And I think this current group w will produce a lot more. Mm. In fact, because I think it's a it's a group that's got a lot of potential, and it's got it's got some some players that can can really be be big in South African football. Yeah. And and speaking of that, coach, um at which point then do you realize that you're not going to become a, a professional footballer? And emotionally and psychologically, what were you feeling considering that you'd put so much pressure on yourself to become a professional? I don't I, in fact, I don't even think I put myself under a lot of pressure because although I was playing football, but the the reality is I think I got to a point where when I got injured with my knee, uh, and, and I don't remember the day I made a conscious decision. I don't think I've, I ever made the conscious decision of saying, hang up the boots and stop. I think time moved me more into coaching mm -hmm. than into being on the pitch because I started devoting more time into going to the library and reading mm -hmm. books about training sessions and going to, to then going to parties, for an example. I would have preferred to to, to go to, to a library at school, uh, high school. We had, we had a, a big library there at, uh, at Grand Park and I, and I used to go to the library and, and, and coaching for dummies was, was one of my first books, you know, and you, you look for training exercises, you spend time on the internet and you're trying to print articles and resources and I've still got these big files big, big, big files where I would just file every article, every training exercise, every passing drill, every... And uh, I then started being devoted to that yeah. of, of creating sessions and, and studying the game religiously, watching games, you know. And I remember at that time, Vincent Dalboski was the coach of Real Madrid. And they played with a back three yeah. and, and one of the few teams who were playing with the back three and I was... I was blown away, you know, and uh, how he had uh, even players like uh, Anelka, Morientes, uh, Salgado. Uh, I remember that team, uh, uh, Fernando Hierro at the back, uh, Helguera. I remember that team. Mm. And uh, McManaman and Ridondo, and I used to just religiously watch that team, and I, and I loved that team. And that's what got me in, so involved in tactics, you know. So. So uh, I don't think there was a time where I, I made a very conscious decision. No, yeah. I don't think so. But yeah. I, I think I think as fate would have had it, I was moved into that space by by some form of divine uh, <laughs> divine spirit, divine uh, way of working. Yeah, and 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 of course. Uh, when you are a child that is, is and at that time to be honest I was I was even more spiritual than probably I am now yeah so I think God moved me into the, that space because 
uh, even even part to my responsibilities back then was to 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 win even souls and, and mm. preach the word of God to these kids. Mm. I remember we before we started training we would have the word of the day and we would pray and, and there would be a scripture that I would get from home cell. Yeah. And even before the match before my team talk we would talk about the, the the religious reading that we had on Wednesday yeah. in home cell because some of them didn't want to come to home cell. Yeah. So I like, brought, I'll catch I'll catch you. <laughs> so I brought home cell to to, to I brought home cell to the field, <laughs> and they they still sometimes remind me. But yeah. that's that's uh, part of our responsibility, I suppose. Till 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 this day is that uh, part to being uh, what we want to be in within our professions and and to use the talent that God gave us, mm. uh, because there's a difference between your talent and your calling. Mm. Uh, the talent is the vehicle that moves the calling mm. and a lot of people make that mistake to think sometimes your talent is your calling mm. no your 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 talent is 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 only the vehicle mm. so the talent of coaching is only the vehicle for the calling to change lives mm. and and i use the coaching aspect which with the influence through football yeah to be able to 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 channel my calling and the responsibility that i have mm. in 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 trying to change uh, many 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 lives mm. and then the next step then becomes platinum stars yeah how does that opportunity come about because because now now we have Black Poison playing in the same league mm. with Vits and Platinum Stars and uh, you know, at that time it was Silver Stars Silver Stars yeah in Model Fontaine and uh, uh, Pirates Chiefs and this team is is this team is a small team from Soweto but it's beating Chiefs it's buzzing you know at Nike Center <laughs> yeah they, they, they beat they and then we beat uh, Silver Stars one nil and they were the strongest at that time mm. you know. And we beat them one nil. And we beat Chiefs two one in the league. And we were we were in a in a in the academy league. We were fifth, fourth. We even played, and unfortunately lost to Jomo Cosmos in a cup final, Phillips Cup, mm. where we beat Pirates on the way to to get into the cup final. And uh, before then, um, I was working with Tabo Sinong actually at that time. Yeah. And and we had amalgamated the teams because he had a club called Seven Stars. And we were still called Triple S at that time, Sabelo Superstars. And 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 uh, when we uh, we we merged, we got some very good players from yeah. Tabo Sinong's team. And and Abu uh, Mlele, Abu Zueli, some some exceptional football players. Abu Kumo, they came from Pinville, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, we started being very competitive in the the academy league. Mm -hmm. And, and winning games and, and then the stock, you know, uh, rose. And I remember Palacios uh, threw a coach for Ivoy because Ivoy was still coaching from Zola. Mm -hmm. the, the coach is Zola class called Voy. And he, he, he told us that uh, uh, Palacios wants both me and Tabo to, to, to come to Pirates. Mm -hmm. And uh, I rejected the, the proposition and Tabo went to Pirates, so I stayed behind. Yeah. And and uh, as fate would have it, then a couple of months later, Silver Stars came yeah. headhunting and they were very aggressive. Yeah. Very, very aggressive. <laughs> because, because they they were they, they wanted the coach. Yeah. And I went then to join the the other fifteens, you know. Mm. And 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 uh, yeah, from under 15s, I then went to the under 17s, under 17s, I went to the under 19s, where we, we had some incredible football players, mm -hmm. Musa Mashaba, Dino Ntlovo, Coldrin Kutsia, Steven Tony, uh, Tato Tlone, who played for, 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 for Vets, Free State Stars. We had some exceptional, we had a boy called uh, Pro, Lerato Pro, he was, he was amazing. I was, it's a pity, you know, other things happened, you know, and he got involved in a car accident because I think that boy would have been, he was from Val, yeah. exceptional player, incredible uh, mentality, incredible game intelligence and awareness, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought he was going to be something special, but yeah, we produced quite a lot and uh, a lot of football players, Brady Robler was there mm -hmm. and, and, and some of the other top, top, top football players, but we did our part and produced a lot of professional football players and uh, uh, I worked with some top coaches, Kevin Johnson, Alan Fries, uh, Steve Compella mm. and uh, it was just, was just an exceptional uh, 
learning yeah. uh, phase of my of my coaching yeah. career. Considering that um, you're from Orlando, why then do you decide to go for Silver Stars as opposed to Orlando Pirates when um, Augusto came knocking? I think the timing just was not right. Mm. And for some strange reason, I, I knew that eventually I would go to Pirates, mm. but maybe in a, in a <laughs> different capacity. Yeah. Even back then, I think I had the feeling. Mm. And uh, I just felt that the timing wasn't right. And I think I felt that... Uh, the the proposition wasn't right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe in uh, in 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 a more spiritual way, it was again this this understanding that everything happens for good for those who yeah. who believe and 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 that's the reality is is that uh, once you don't make decisions by the flesh. Because it was very easy for me to say, wow, Pirates is a team I support. It's, uh, it's my grandfather's team. Yeah. That he, he had a huge influence in, 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 in and uh, as a captain, as a scout, as a, as, a, as, a, as a coach. Because back then they didn't have coaches. Mm. So as the captain, you had the responsibility to be... And, and sometimes I, I understand when I see my, my uncle Brajay with... Uh, the way he runs his club, Jomo Cosmos, because yeah. I think that's that's his father's spirit. Mm. That's how his father did things. He was the coach, he was the captain, he was the bus driver, he was the... Yeah. Because back then, we didn't know about coaches. So mm. so he was the one that uh, scouted players and uh, Deb Homloy's uh, father, uh, even uh, Tate Kizam, Mutawung Senior, was brought to Pirates by my grandfather and a lot of other players. And some of these pirates greats, when I met them, uh, had incredible stories to tell about my my grandfather and their friendship with him. You know, mm. including that the case of Taung, who who said to me, had had my grandfather been alive when he came back from America, they would not be Kaiser Chiefs because he would not have betrayed him to start another club. He would have come <laughs> back to South Africa and and rejoined Pirates mm. if, if, if my grandfather was alive. Mm. And so, as they always say, like everything happens for a reason and uh, uh, in a good way from a bad situation, the bad being that we lost uh, an icon, an incredible servant of the game, but also a, someone who would have been uh, a huge resource for me as a coach now. And my grandfather yeah. and the family lost its its father, its 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 leader. But in a good way, his death also brought the rise of a, a team called Kaiser Chiefs, which yeah. is, which is, uh, and as that uh, I didn't say it, but yeah, that, uh, said it, you know, and yeah. and and that's the reality. And yeah. you think about it, and you and you're like, my goodness, if only. Uh, if only heaven had a had a dialing code, you know, yeah. because there's, I'm sure, for sure, that there are some moments in my coaching career where I could have just spoken to him and and, and gone home and say, how how do I solve this? How mm. do I how do how do I do this? But but God had uh, His own plans, and I think uh, uh, I'm just grateful that I, I I I have an opportunity to to try to. To, to continue to achieve some of the things that he wanted to achieve. And one of them was to improve the level of coaching in South African football. Mm. So during your time at Silver Stars, um, you're obviously now um, working with some of these coaches that you had mentioned. What was the game starting to look like in your head from a tactical and technical perspective? And which were some of the aspects that you were picking up? Sure. Back then, oof. look, I think... I think I think I was very fortunate to work with with uh, Kevin Johnson, Alan Fries, Steve Compella, in the sense that all three of them, I think, in a way, had huge. And and at that time, I think the soul was very fertile. And all three of them had very huge influences in my in my coaching career. I think from Alan Fries was clear that you needed to be organizationally well prepared off the pitch mm. and Ellen Fries for me has been one of the coaches that I learned a lot of uh, about the importance of organization mm. and not just defensive organization which I think is a very predominant and strong aspect of his of his coaching methodology and his thinking 
uh, but I, uh, the, the organization with regards to the kit and the transport and things like that and, and already from the academy you start you start not just being the coach but you, you, you're also the, the, the physio, the team manager, the, the, the doctor, the, you know what I mean? So yeah. you, you, and, and Alan Fries is, 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 is very, very good at that and, yeah. I, and I think that's why you see him being so successful in clubs like Platinum Stars or even in the NFT now where he, he, he has the responsibility to make sure that things run around the team very, very well and he's very good at that. Mm. And then from, from, from a technical perspective, I think Kevin Johnson was huge for me because yeah. he had come from this IX school and this uh, sports school of excellence background yeah. and he was, he was a top trainer. Uh, his training sessions, I remember even when he was assistant coach to Miguel Camondi, I used to watch his training sessions. Every day there would be something new, a variation, and, and the training was always stimulating the players. Mm -hmm. You know, then they, were, they would go leave the session looking forward to the next training session. Yeah. And Kevin Johnson was, uh, was very, very good on the pitch, mm -hmm. like exceptional on the pitch. And then you had Steve Compello, who was uh, who had very good man management skills and 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 had the ability to convey the message to the group and to players. So I picked up those things from 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 them, and uh, I think in that space, uh, I w not too much from a tactical perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that only got to when I moved to 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 Sundowns, especially under Pizzo. Mm -hmm. But uh, but from a from a youth perspective and from from a, a training and conceptualizing ideas and putting things together on the on the pitch from from ideas that I had in my mind, yeah. uh, being a platinum stars was very important for me for that. Mm. And then the transition comes. So from platinum stars, mm -hmm. you then get the opportunity to go to Sundowns. Mm -hmm. How does that come about and what are your initial thoughts upon that offer? From platinum stars, I then, Steve Compella gets fired and I'm like, I'm leaving because he, he brought me closer to the first team. One day he came to watch the under-19 training session and he was like, my goodness, I like this. You know, I'd like you to, to, to come and do this session with the first team. And you can just imagine at that time we had about Chabupule, Oscar Ntohai, <laughs> uh, Tabang Monare, the late Ranteria. We had a star-studded team, called mm. Sabula. We No, it was incredible. And there mm. I am, uh, Coach Steve calling me to, to, to run a training session. And I still remember that it was a transition training session mm. because I, I had done that with the first team. Mm. And that, that word was becoming the buzzword in mm. coaching at that time. And, and I remember even uh, Venga then started introducing this uh, countering the counter sort of uh, way of thinking, you yeah. know. And the game had already started to move in this space where it, it was getting a bit chaotic, mm. which is, I think, it's reached its pinnacle at the moment. But And because it's reached the pinnacle, the next advancement in the game is, 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 is in that space where you're getting into into the cognitive side from a, from a thinking perspective mm. to assist the, the physical side from a, from a speed perspective where we've moved into the space where you probably cannot make even bigger developments into individual players from a physiological uh, physiological and and motor qualities perspective now with mm -hmm. with with the advancement of science into the game that athletes cannot get faster than what they are mm -hmm. probably now but but from a cognitive perspective i think i think there's a lot more to be done from from that space to think faster to see things faster not to to see things in relation to yourself but in relation to to everybody else around you, in relation to where the ball is, in relation to what the scoreline is, in relation to to where the spaces are, you know, and 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 that is where the game is going to go. That the smarter players, who also have very good moto and technical tactical qualities, but the players that will be will be huge in the game for the next couple of years will be players that are. Are, are probably just as quick with thinking and evaluating and seeing things mm. as they are with with accelerating with and without the ball, you know. So already at that time, the the game was already saying, "Hey, uh, we fasten your seatbelts. We are we are getting faster," you know. So so uh, we worked and 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 I I was in that space. Uh, Steve Compella resigned and. 
and uh, I then resigned. He got fired, and then I I, I then resigned. And uh, I remember the conversation we had, and he was like, "No, no, no, but how can you do that?" And uh, and and I said, "But if I if you brought me here to the first team, and they say you have not done well, then it's 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 only fair that I." It's a collective. I take that responsibility too, or part of that responsibility, to because I had the responsibility to help you. Mm. So if 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 the club feels that you were not uh, successful in in relation to the objectives that they had set, it means that I was not successful enough to help you. Mm. And uh, and then we left, and I went to complete footballers under Walter Mugwena, who I had met through him coming to Platinum Stars. And, and he signed Dino Lovu, yeah. and who was my top striker at that time. Mm. Dino was scoring goals for, for us with the under-19s, and then Dino left because Walter took him away for, for trials to Portsmouth, and I was mm. very angry. <laughs> and I fought with Walter. <laughs> Walter, my top striker. And, and then uh, Walter, Walter and I became very close from then. Mm. And he then wanted to start an academy with his French allies. And and he he asked me to come to 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 work for him at Complete Footballers to to help manage his players because he was an agent at that time yeah. and, and managed uh, and start this process of a Complete Footballers Academy, which I then did. Uh, but I got tired after about six months of sitting in the office, mm. and I said to Walter, Walter, I can't sit in the office anymore. I I I'm I'm, I'm a pitch person. I yeah. live on the pitch. Mm. And then he helped me to get to Sundowns because he then put a call through to, to Trot mm -hmm. because they were looking for, for, for coaches for different positions. Yeah. I remember that when I got to the interview, they told me that there were three positions available. And I, I had the f fortunate privilege of, of saying, I think I'm best suited for these positions because they asked and mm -hmm. they said, do you want to be the head of the satellite in Soweto? Because you come from Soweto. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be one of the scouts because we've got positions there in the scouts? We want to grow the the scouting portfolio of the club and and try to have a greater outreach to to different communities and therefore we want to expand the scouting uh, possibilities at the club at that time. Or you want to be an assistant coach of the under 15s with Isaac Shai? And I went first <laughs> the coach of, of, of the under 15 because, because I had that experience mm. of if I was going to run the satellite, I knew I'd have more admin mm. than I would have pitch time. Mm. So I wanted more pitch time, even though the admin comes with the pitch time. Mm. But I wanted more pitch time than I would have with the admin because mm. the reality is uh, if you run a satellite, run an academy, then you've got meetings with the parents, you've got parents coming every single day to ask why the player is not playing <laughs> yeah. and, and, and this is under 11 and the under 13s and there's another one so you, you would probably have, and I didn't think that I was cut out for that so mm -hmm. I was not good enough for that I was not good enough to, 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 to go around in fact that's what even happened when I was at Sundowns because uh, when Coach Pizzo came his first task for me was to go and scout for, for the opposition and come back and give him reports yeah and I think that was his way of testing the capacity. Yeah. And I did three or four reports, and after that, I I said to him, I'm not cut out for this. I want to I want to go back to coaching my under 19s. Yeah. Because I want to be on the pitch. Yeah. And 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 what was that um, progression like? Working your way up then from under 15s and finding yourself right up into first team. And it happened so fast. It's not even funny because in three months already. I was the under-19 head coach. I spent probably three, four months with the under-15s, and then uh, we had uh, people from Spain, the jo Johan Cruyff Institute, and these were top, top, top coaches where I learned a lot about coaching. In fact, yeah, I must tell you that uh, it was very, very important that I worked with Mena and Enrique because I became very, very close to them, and I and and I just became a sponge, and I absorbed, and I absorbed, and I absorbed everything. They, they had come from the the Johan Cruyff Institute. They had come from Barcelona's way of thinking, where they were responsible for for setting up uh, methodologies within uh, football clubs across the world and academies across the world, and then they would uh, dispatch their technicians to be able to work in that space and I think they brought two of the best at that time even though there was a I think there was four others but two of the best at that time for me was Enrique and Mena and particularly both both had different uh, aspects though the one Enrique was 
unbelievable with the, the theoretical aspects of the game and from a from a planning and preparation perspective and the detail mm. into into micro cycles and the detail into the way you want to see the players play on the pitch and then you had a manner who was was magnificent on the on the training pitch yeah. and details on body position and angling mm. receiving and 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 the likes and that that period of, of of two years in the academy for me was 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 incredible because uh, I learned I learned a lot from Mena and Enrique and and um, I think a lot of what I do today as a coach uh, is ideas that I've adapted and, and and adopted adopted and adapted from 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 their teachings yeah you know? and. And I think from that perspective, uh, I got a, a bit of appetite for, 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 for the truest sense of where the game is because uh, at that time, uh, those type of things like receiving with the back foot and, 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 and how, do you, how do you open your body up mm. to receive, to, to influence the game, mm. you know. And uh, those type of details were not the scanning, mm. uh, body orientation, uh, the movements, the arriving into the spaces, not standing, you mm. know, occupying space, but arriving in spaces, receiving uh, with with possibilities of the half turn and, yeah. and influencing the game and, and 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 things like that. But that became that became huge, mm. huge for me because those were things that I then. Uh, Adopted and and, and, and and made prerequisites in my uh, in, in my outlook of, of of what the game is supposed to be like. Yeah, and and I think that is a very pertinent point because I think in in our country we don't pay a lot of attention to that. No. You know, because sometimes or a lot of the times people don't understand the difference between a progressive and a regressive first touch. The importance of having your body orientation adequate. Why am I taking it on the back foot? When I'm receiving in between the lines, what is my spacing like? Yeah, but if you if you if you if you if you look at if you look at where the game is, for an example, and now you're starting to talk about you you you're starting to talk about things like in, in between the lines, and let's and let's say for an example, and positioning in, yeah. in a sense, and let's say you play against a team with a four five one, for an example, yeah, and and they sit they sit in a in a low block. Because, because, let's say you are the, the the you are the the bigger team. Yeah. And of course, nine times out of ten, the striker comes into an area where they they try to put at least the striker with 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 a, a low block on your six. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, which which means that a lot of the time you have your center halves, you have your center halves in that type of type of position. Yeah. You know, you know, you've got. The principles of width and depth that are necessary, so you you would do that, yeah. and depending on what formation you would play, whether you play with uh, with that, and and then you you've got your wingers then where you can manipulate it into a four three three for an example, yeah. or or you play with uh, or you play with a situation where you've got that maybe, and you've got two strikers still, yeah, you know, but but knowing knowing that you've got possibilities to, to, to pin maybe one of these or pin one of these and still get someone in between the lines yeah. and pushing maybe your next your next um, your next line behind the first line of the press so so that you can try to find these. But the the, the most important thing now yeah. becomes how do you then try to manipulate the the structure yeah. to be able to f- to arrive in these positions, arrive in these positions, or maybe even in these positions. Mm-hmm. And now in football, it's to try to arrive maybe even in these positions, in the pockets, Yeah. whether through a 10, a false nine, or whether through an inverted winger mm-hmm. that tra- travels inside. And you've got so many, so many possibilities because every movement, regardless of whether it's this, it needs needs some form of reaction, yeah. and for you to be able to come into the space means maybe you've got to try to provoke a pass yeah. that comes that comes into this position. Yeah. Or, or sometimes even what happens now in modern football is the influence of the centre backs. Yeah, stepping and, up. Yeah, and maybe 
once you are in this position, for an example, and say you stay in between in between the lines, which is both vertical and horizontal. Yeah. But if you stay in between the lines, in between the two, it's a three-man midfield, so let's say we're, we're in between the two, and we pin their six, which is their deepest defensive midfielder, and used to, to screen, whether in a double pivot or whether in a single pivot with yeah. two eights. And, and, and then you say to yourself, can you get possibilities of inviting the press from the next line yeah. so that you can arrive in this line with possibilities of collapsing mm. every line as you go through. Yeah. But, but the receiving of, 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 of the ball in these positions, the movements that allow for possibilities like this, for an example, yeah. or, or even possibilities like this, for an example, Mm. are very very important mm. so it's not movements in isolation but it movements that allow you to be able to arrive in, in positions where you can easily hurt the opponent yeah so you then go from um, your under 19s and um, you did very well you won the Cape and Zipa yeah. and you had some phenomenal individuals yeah. you know that you are privileged to coach how does um, the opportunity to now go to the first team full time come about <laughs> Well, well, Coach Pizzo is the one that formulated it, and, and at that time we were doing very well with uh, with uh, the under 19s with Percy, the late Madisha, uh, Moti. We had a top team. Uh, we had some very very good players, mm-hmm. and I'm not surprised that players like Baseka Marco went on. In fact, it's very funny because Kaya, Percy, uh, Baseka, when I arrived at the under 19s, were actually on their way out. And, and the, the club was was prepared to give them clearances to be... Keegan was in that team also, yeah. but Keegan got promoted and went to the ABC side and, and, and uh, Godfrey, Paseca Marco, Percy were... No, 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 these boys are not... Are not they could play us, but they're ill-disciplined. Mm. Paseca was not even greatly uh, uh, regarded in the academy. And I saw him play one match and I said, my goodness, I can't release a player like this. Mm-hmm. The computer was, was like they say, Paseka, I see you now, left back. Uh, Paseka is, 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 is way below the capacity that he has. Mm. And even when we when I was at Pirates, I tried to to bring him in from, from Chip at that time and, and I wanted him to play in a more offensive position mm. and in a couple of games he did. And, and he was very very good. He he has uh, a huge ability. This 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 area, yeah, half this, space. This this area, yeah, the ten pocket, the yeah. half space. This is an area that Paseca thrives in. Mm-hmm. Not tight areas and, and close control and, and seeing the action at the end. Yeah, and that's football players. The best mm-hmm. football players are the, the the good football players see the action now. Mm. They, they and they are good, so they solve those problems because they see their action now, or yeah. maybe even a step or two ahead. But the best football players are the ones that see the action yeah. in its completion, what it looks like at the end, and and they drive then that process to be able. And that's why maybe even now the importance of coaching with principles rather than. Uh, m- this micro controlling of of every movement, every step, is is very very important. When you have your principles and your sub principles and your and then your sub sub principles, and those are what govern y- y- your 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 tactical culture on the pitch. And once once you are able to have that, then there's a little bit of space for for the creativity and the quality of the players to be able to carry out uh, these principles. In a in a in a way where everybody understands holistically what what the picture should look like, and um, and then and then you need the best players of the pitch to be able to to carry that out, you know. Yeah, yeah. So then when you then start to progress and you start to adapt w- within the first team, what what was that like, and um, what were some of the training sessions like? No, the training sessions were good. I was I was I I was. I was I was feeling very fortunate, you know, to be in that type of space because even at that time, uh, we had some incredible football players. Also, you know, we had uh, surprise Moriri, Ezi, uh, Nyandoro, uh, Tekumudise, who 
I spent quite a lot of time with discussing football even back then, you yeah. know, off the pitch and and, and, and incredible mind. Uh, Donna has uh, sees the game in a in a very complex way, but a simplified complex way, yeah. which I like, you know. And I and I enjoy my discussions with Deco a lot because even till today when we meet or we talk or you know we have coffee we we, we discuss incredible and he's got so much detail and i think yeah. he's going to he's going to play a big bigger role in south african football in fact but uh, we had even uh, top players like langerman and then we started to integrate your Percy's and your, yeah. your madishas and and i was fortunate enough that uh, i came at a time when coach pizzo uh, integrated me more and more onto the pitch and gave me a lot more responsibility to to train the team mm-hmm. and to 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 work with the team on a daily basis on the pitch, you know. And that doesn't always happen. You don't mm-hmm. always get coaches that are very comfortable with that. But Coach Pizzo was 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 incredible for me in my in my in my journey. Mm-hmm. You, you will not believe because uh, he allowed me to coach the team on mm-hmm. the training pitch, you know, and. And uh, he would just say to me, look, this is how I play. These are my principles. And uh, I want the team to be very good at this, to keep the ball and to... And then I would have to try to get all his ideas across onto the pitch. Yeah. And and that for me was, uh, was incredible because uh, I then learned about the importance of of of, of using your technical team and, and surrounding yourself mm-hmm. with the with, uh, experience extremely competent people who who are maybe even better at some of the things that you can do mm. you know what I mean and and they do certain things better than you can do them you know and coach Pizzo was always one that uh, opened that space for me and 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 many other coaches I think in 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 relation to to getting better and better on the pitch because that's what I believe a coach I think when you are a coach and particularly the next couple of years, I think I think the best coaches will be the coaches that are able to 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 be very very good on the pitch. Mm. You need to be exceptionally good on the pitch, but also who also have very good man management skills, and 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 that's where the game is going to go. A couple of years ago, you could you could survive by just being very good with your man management mm. and your motivation, but I think I think now the next the next few years. Uh, the work on the pitch, on the training sessions, will probably be far more important than your your team management and your 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 your, your group dynamics. Yeah. Uh, more more than motivation, you need a little bit more. Yeah, and in 2016, you you guys went on and won the CAF Champions League, mm. and um, I just like for you to to get into it right now. What was the team like then? What was the approach and? Um, from a, a tactical perspective, what were you guys trying to achieve? Look, the the coach Pizzo was was very clear. Okay, yeah. Let me just no, but, you, but you don't even have to. Okay, okay. Coach Pizzo was very clear because because um, and and his teams would always have great possibilities because yeah. because at home the team would be very different to away, mm-hmm. especially in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. In the Champions League. Uh, at home, that this in blue would would probably be what you would find from Sundowns. Yeah, you would find possibilities for 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 a team that looks a lot like this. Yeah. So in goals, well, in goals you had you had um, let's do it like this actually, because he, because that's the coach loved this. This is how Sundowns and Coach Pizzo played, especially, especially, especially away uh, from home. Yeah. The the line would be a little bit deeper, yeah. so you wouldn't have this, but you would have a little bit like this, and that then said yeah. you want to drop your your line of confrontation a little bit, a little bit, and he could play in a block. Yeah, easy. He could play in a block, but what was very important for the coach was. Was was this midfield organization? Yeah, and 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 this midfield four. If the ball went, for an example, across to 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 here, and even if they had, for an example, even if they had, for an example, a winger fullback, yeah, and let's say let's say they they put 
striker that would pin the center backs at Tabo and Tete, for an example. So yeah. you'd have maybe a Dennis, and you'd have a Tabo and Tete on the left, maybe, yeah. and you'd own Alias Scrut. Uh, but at, for the Champions League, he wasn't part of that. But yeah. he was he was in that space. <laughs> but you had uh, Langerman predominantly at, at left back. Mm. He was he was very important for the group because he had the capacity to to get into these positions longer yeah. and deliver very, very good crosses. And, and that became a, a clear pattern because then the responsibility to receive from, from these type of areas would, would be a Slompo. Yeah. And, and then once Slompo had it, you, you knew there was those possibilities for Langa. Yeah. But, 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 but in, in, in this sort of area, you, the build-up would always have either possibilities for outward receiving or, or inverted receiving and predominantly more inverted receiving like this in the yeah. pockets from, from the wingers, you know, yeah. Dominguez and Anthony Lafour, uh, uh, Temba Zwane, yeah. you know, uh, Keegan Dolly even. So so that's what w you would have, depending on what the game spoke to to, yeah. to us about. And then you would have uh, a Shompo, a Mabunda, uh, combination that was predominantly what was used in the mm. Champions League that from Paul Mabunda because I think it gave the team a lot of solidarity in that box defending when you look at uh, a deep block particularly away from home yeah. and you could you could absorb a little bit of pressure and, and screen this area a, a lot better than than uh, a lot of teams yeah so that that Trompo Mabunda partnership was very important for them and then Madisha in in this type of position and um, who was the right back? I think we had Sianda, Zwane also, and we had someone else competing for the right back position. Asavel. Asavel and Bekile also was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so, and, and, um, was Anele there by that time? Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure. But, but yeah, it was Asavela and, and, uh, and Sianda Zwane that were competing for, for this position. And then you had a, a uh, Temba Zwane, mm. you had uh, Belembe again, uh, Lafo again, uh, and sometimes even Percy in yeah. this position, you know, uh, Keegan Dolly in this position. So, yeah. so, so those were the the options. And then you had, depending on what the game spoke about, you had a Karma mm. playing behind a Percy, mm. or you had a, a Karma playing behind a, a, a Mameniang or Mahuta, or or even sometimes uh, Malajila, and particularly away from home, yeah. Malajila's. Uh, possibilities to to help the team press but also to compress the, the block yeah. and, and have a striker that can that can w w work very hard on, on on closing down the sixes of the opposition Malajila was was very important for for coach Pizzo for that role but mm. but as we went on uh, you you could easily find a, a Percy especially away from home yeah. for for the counter attack because because then then as I said said to you uh, having the responsibility of saying, okay, away from home, we sit in a in a in a block of of and and this was very important for him. Yeah. This this line of four where the ball went, as I was saying earlier, where the ball goes to the side, and you've got to now orientate and 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 move across the responsibility for the opposite uh, uh, winger mm -hmm. to come into this position was very very important. But you also needed a striker that could could work into this position, work into this position, and even certain times work together like this mm. to try to prevent passes from coming into, into these type of positions. Yeah. Say for an example, that was that, and try to, 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 if you go with one, it becomes a bit easier to find that access. Yeah. But when you, when you are able to, to play with two, the responsibility sometimes is to try to, to work a bit harder in, in screening possibilities of, of, of players receiving mm. in, into these areas. And that becomes the first responsibility, especially when you defend with two. But when, you, when you've when you got possibilities, even for that, especially if, if let's say, they play with also a double double pivot in the midfield, yeah. winger, and they play with a double pivot in the midfield that looks to always orientate themselves in mm. relation to where the ball goes, it becomes very important then to still have a responsibility that, that still says, I can help to screen the pass, but but you've got to also help and not not be flat in the line where yeah. and then the next pass diagonal into that half space is, is on. Yeah. Because then that forces 
a midfielder to, to jump out and press. And, and then you, you create this vacuum where people can play into that space and play into that space and, and then look to hurt you with, with, with single passes and combination play and, and, and then arrive in, in areas where they can hurt you, you know. So you, we had a lot of, lot of fluidity and a lot of options for the yeah. coach. And, and uh, he, he was very good at using the right players for the right matches. You, mm-hmm. If you went to, to Mazembe, for an example, he knew how to set the team up and mm-hmm. which type of players he needed for that type of game, you know. So, mm-hmm. Mame Niang, for an example, played with Pesi when we went to Lubumbashi. Uh, but, but, but always a team that could hurt you in this structure, but also a team that could hurt you when, when yeah. especially at home, uh, playing a little bit closer to the opposition box. Mm. And what was the feeling like then of winning the CAF Champions League? For me, it was 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 uh, personally was was very very emotional. I, I remember I broke down into tears because uh, the two Champions Leagues that uh, have arrived in South Africa have been two Champions Leagues. That one was at Pirates, and in 1995, when Orlando Pirates won the Champions League, the bus drove uh, and did a trophy parade in Soweto. Mm. And one of the stops that they made was at my house in Orlando West. You know, and they delivered the trophy out of respect for my grandfather. And I got the privilege to be able to to get a feel for the Champions League trophy. Yeah. So when in, when it happened in 2016 that I was part of it, mm. it brought back those memories, you know, of of 1995 and feeling this Champions League trophy. And I was I was just grateful to God for the opportunity to 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 have been part of that historic moment and I, I knew what it meant to the club, I knew what it meant to the supporters, I knew what it meant to South African football, I knew what it meant to, to Coach Pizzo because of the hard work that they had put in and everybody else at the club. Mm-hmm. And I knew what it meant to the president. Uh, Mr. Mutsipe came to the club and one of the biggest things that he said, he says he wanted to make Sundowns one of the, the greats of, of, of the African continent. and. And uh, it's it's a big, 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 big responsibility yeah. because you are competing with, with with clubs that have done that for over a hundred years. I mean, for an example, uh, 10, 11 Champions League trophies uh, for Al Ahly, and how old is that club? Mm. And Sundowns is only in its fifties and has won Champions League trophy, but wants to make sure that every single season we are dominating and challenging for that. Mm. And, and and in that space you are with Widad and, and uh, Ali and uh, Som Zamalek and Esperance and these ones have been chasing it for for longer than you have been in existence and, and even for longer than you've had this ambition because mm-hmm. that ambition came when uh, and became even more prevalent and stronger yeah. when when Dr. Patrice came into the club and that does that's not the 50 something years that the club has been yeah. in uh, in existence so so it's a it's a it's a mammoth task but it's a realistic task and a task that needs a lot of perseverance a lot of patience yeah uh, because because the game in the in, on the African continent is 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 completely different because mm. you play North Africans, they play different to West Africans, and West Africans play different to, to the SEDEC teams, you know. In Central Africa, Eastern Africa, that's completely different. But you, you, you need, you need, the, you need the, 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 the team to be able to, 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 to get into that space because luck alone will never get you to win Champions League. Mm. And then the, the next step in, in your journey is, is Orlando Pirates, mm. you know. Do you then feel like this is this is the right time, and um, spiritually you're more or less in alignment with where God wants you to be? Is that the reason why you accept that opportunity? The the strangest thing is that before Pirates had had, had called, and the only reason where why I could even engage with Orlando Pirates and Dr. Koza was because my contract was coming to an end, and may and and I've always been one that says I need to honor my contracts, I need to honor my word, and and integrity for me is very important. Mm. Uh, so my contract was coming up at uh, at, uh, at uh, Sundowns, and and Dr. Koza called me, and the funny thing is we were still in Champions League at that time, <laughs> and. Um, but the season had finished in South Africa, and and a couple of weeks 
before and maybe for for three weeks four weeks in a row i was dreaming about my grandfather mm -hmm. and he would just make appearances in my dreams like just random appearances and this is a man i've never met because he passed away when uh, my dad was only three years old so so my dad never even thought about having a child at three years old mm -hmm. so i never met i was not even a thought when he passed away but when i dreamt about him i knew and every time he visits in my dreams, I know that that is him. Mm. And that's very strange. But mm, And then Dr. Koza called. I, I knew that that was my grandfather saying, it's okay, you can go there. Mm. And once I had gotten his sort of uh, approval to, to do that, then I speak to the family and, and, and everybody else felt that it was the right thing to do. Even though uh, it was a very difficult decision to make mm. because... Uh, uh, Coach Pizzo had, had given me this opportunity and I was extremely loyal to him and I was enjoying working with him, to be honest. And we were succeeding and winning trophies, but I remember that when Pirates lost 6-1 to Sundowns at Loftus, mm -hmm. I remember that as, as, as much as I was extremely delighted with that result yeah. because as a coach, but, but seeing Pirates <laughs> deteriorating into that state hurt me big time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought that I could play a bit of a role to to try to revive the club and, and try to assist them into into getting into the positions where we all know they deserve to be. Mm -hmm. So when you walk into Orlando Pirates and you walk into that change room, what is the differences between the the dressing room you were involved in at Mamelodi Sundowns and then now the one you are no, currently with at Orlando? There were Pirates? big differences big differences and the first one was the mentality and I remember the one of the first few games I don't know if it was the second or the third game uh, in the season when we arrived I remember we went to play uh, Barocca in Pulukwane and and we drew 2-2 two -two. And, and and the crowd were, the, the change room after the game was a ruckus you know it was celebratory and uh, and uh, I, I, I couldn't believe it, you know, like a big club like Pirates will celebrate drawing against Barocca and with all due respect to Barocca, uh, I felt that we should have won the game that day, you know, and, 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 and being Orlando Pirates, we had, we had the responsibility to win the game. And, uh, but, and I remember I, I lost it in the change room after the match when I, the players celebrated and I said, we never celebrate draws in this team. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things we had to do with Micho at Pirates was changing mentality, changing the way the club was perceived, where there were games that Pirates could play for a draw and would be happy to get a draw. But that was just not good enough, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and the mentality in big teams is to win matches. And that's the mentality. Big teams win matches. Mm -hmm. And the day big teams forfeit the desire, the and and it's okay because football you win, lose or draw, and football happens sometimes. Yeah. You 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 will not win all the matches, and you will not play every single match very very well. Mm. And also the price of a result at big clubs is is too cheap to sell to your fans. Big clubs have a responsibility to win, but to win in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Uh, a way that is synonymous with the culture, the, 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 the history of the club and that resonates with people even though maybe there are people that did not up, uh, come to the game. Yeah. But those people know how the team would have played. Even when they get the scoreline, they would, they would have a picture of mm -hmm. what the team would be trying to do. You've got already a picture of how Barcelona plays yeah. in your mind, regardless of, 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 of whether you've watched the game or not. But yeah. in your mind, there's, there's a very consistent way that Barcelona looks to, to, to carry its ethos, its culture onto, onto the pitch. Mm. And you can say the same thing about Real Madrid, for an example. You can say the same thing now about Man City. And they're trying to, in the past, you, you had this about, uh, about uh, Man United. You've got this now about a clear uh, picture. Of, of Liverpool, so these successful clubs, Ajax Amsterdam, these successful mm -hmm. clubs have a, a certain way of, 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 of influencing the game in, in, in football countries and therefore that was one of the biggest things. We, yeah. had to, we had to come with first a game model that we felt suited the players that we had and then we had to, we had to 
instill a certain mentality around that. And the yeah. mentality was for us uh, Im- a lot more important yeah. because because uh, at that moment, at, at certain games, the club was happy enough to, to, to draw certain matches and, and we couldn't have that. Mm. And so for two seasons in a row, uh, we challenged for, for the championship and uh, the, first, the first season we did it without even huge uh, investments in the transfer window. We had kept more or less the same squad that had finished outside the top eight. Mm. Uh, the season before and had lost uh, six to Supersport, lost four to Supersport in the Nedbank Cup final, which was the last game of the season. And my goodness, we we felt we felt that we had to yeah. to we had a lot of work to do. But mm. but uh, we got stuck in and we we the the club supported us a lot. The chairman was very very good to us. The sons were very good to us, and they gave us a lot of support in the first two seasons. And I think. Uh, we we were we were a bit unlucky in certain moments not to win anything. I mean, yeah. I remember the final against Barocca, the two-two, even though we were one man down through Nyasha, but uh, the complete dominance that we had on that pitch, we should have won. But and that is what I say. Yeah. That is football. But if you if you ask me, did we play every single match while I was at Pirates or we were at Pirates to to try to win? Then I say 100 percent for sure. I think yeah. I think we had we had a clear methodology about about the concepts on the pitch. Yeah, uh, we had a, and that that moved into influencing our recruitment and, yeah. and the policies that we had put in, and the type of players that we wanted. And you could already see that for for the four or five windows that we were there. The type of players that we, we recruited to the club were, were players that fitted the way we, 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 we wanted to see the team play. Vincent Pule, yeah. Pablo Zlamini, Mabasas. Uh, and th- those were the type of players that we brought in because yeah. th- we, 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 we wanted a certain way of, of doing things on the pitch. But that also had to be supported by the way the academy was training because we wanted to be able to get players like Tabiso Munyane and put them into the first team and, and they must go or Augustine Matlonoko. Mm. And, and, and at 16, we gave him an opportunity, Zakes, uh, Zakes we gave him an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we tried our level best to not just be uh, coaches that, that were looking for the here and the now and the results, which was very, very important because big clubs must win. And the day, as I was saying, the day they forfeit that responsibility of winning is the day they lose the status of a big club. Mm, definitely. And you spoke about game model and methodology. In your time at Orlando Pirates with and with Coach Mitchell, what was the approach and what was the game model? Oh, yeah, which was your strongest eleven? No, no. I I tell you, I must say the the at Pirates we were we were we were we were we were very clear in our way of working. Very very clear. Yeah. We still have this document that we we, we put together. Myself, Michael, uh, Darian, and. Um, and uh, and uh, Micho, yeah. but but Michael and uh, and Darian was so important for for particularly for me because uh, one of the the key requirements that I made when I arrived at Pirates was to 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 ask them to to strengthen the technical team, and then we went we got uh, Frank Plain who was a conditioning coach at PSG at that time and probably one of the best conditioning coaches I've worked with. Uh, top level, top level, and we were extremely well conditioned yeah. for for the way we wanted to play, with high octane and with very good counter pressing and high pressing energy, uh, with possibilities to counter press and 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 have mm-hmm. possibilities of dominating the pitch, and not just dominating the ball but dominating the pitch, um, and and you need a very strong training. Uh, curriculum to be able from a from a from a fitness perspective and a conditioning perspective to be closely aligned to the way we wanted to play and Frank was exceptional for that. Mm-hmm. We needed a strong goalkeeper coach and we got Andrew Sparks from uh, from Europe and he was at Swansea and Swansea had this approach of building from the back mm-hmm. and so the goalkeeper again also coming into that space to help us to be able to 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 build our our play from the back and and initiate uh, possibilities. To, to find superiorities and generate these superiorities on the pitch it, it meant that we needed a very strong goalkeeper and, and a goalkeeper coach that could not just train just the fundamentals of goalkeeping but also the principles of build up you know and, and organizational forms in in the schemes that we wanted to to develop from 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 this box uh, 
and, and end response was very important for us. So we, we brought in uh, two European imports and then we, 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 we strengthened the, the analysis department with, yeah. with Darian from, from, um, from Amazulu at that time, who yeah. is one of the best in that space. And then Michael, of course, who, who came also with that background mm. of, 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 of Tottenham and we brought him into that space to try to, to make ourselves a lot stronger from that uh, analytical uh, and, 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 and from, a, from a detailed perspective, mm. you know, in, in increasing the capacity and the eyes and, and, and the competence within that space. And, and we had probably one of the best spaces or, or analysis departments in, in the country for sure, mm. you know, sharp minds, uh, hard workers and, and extremely competent people in that space. And extremely helpful because we then developed even something that uh, we called uh, the player development plans, which was individualized towards helping individual players to improve. Yeah. And we could only do that with the, the, the capacity that that we had. But but we were very clear at Pirates. So 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 of course we had Wayne. Yeah. Uh, even though we had C and Ponchan and, and certain times there would be that 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 rotation. Yeah. But, and a rotation that that was needed in 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 uh, in, uh, in relation to 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 keeping the competition strong, mm. and then we went to 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 try, and we were clear that we, from a long term perspective, it was a position that we felt we needed we needed to strengthen, um, and 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 strengthen in the way of trying to find the ideal profile, yeah. the prototype for for the way we wanted to play. Uh, but also to to be able to 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 deal with uh, the demands of the league, where yeah. there's a lot of crosses and there's a lot of uh, box entries, and, and your yeah. goalkeeper needs the the possibilities to be very dominant in the air, and not just be your playmaker and 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 start things from the back. So in that we had that with with Wayne, we we we, we developed a lot as a team uh, uh, in 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 the seasons that we we had because in the first in the first season uh, we 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 played a little bit like this and in the first season but in the second season we played a little bit more like that mm. with 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 Musa Nyatam as a single pivot yeah and i must tell you maybe the best deep line playmaker i've seen in south african football for sure for sure, uh, in those two seasons, Musa was uh, was so important, and 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 he held in his pocket. He held the schemes. Mm. He controlled the way the team played. Uh, mm. He he controlled the tempo and the intensity of the team because we it, the team started to be feared on the pitch. Yeah. And as soon as the team started to be feared on the pitch, the team had the responsibility of generating the intensity of the match. Mm. And th that's one of the, the, the number one requirements of big teams now is that they've got the responsibility to generate the intensity. Because the teams that, that sit back and absorb pressure are the ones that are happy mm -hmm. to have the game die down with fouls and, and, and balls, you know, and every stoppage. And, but the team, the big teams need the ball to be always in motion and, and, and moving and, and influencing possibilities to, yeah. to, 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 to influence the tempo yeah. and the, the intensity. And without that now, in modern football, as a big club, you, you don't have intensity, you don't have aggression, you, you don't stand a chance to be able to, to compete and then have your, your individual superiority from a technical perspective being on the pitch to influence certain moments that could help you to influence and, and, and get the result. But Musa was, was, was phenomenal for us, right foot, left foot, uh, build up angles, uh, half space occupation even in, in, in build up, uh, uh, rest defense possibilities to control yeah. uh, uh, counter attacks and, and, and positionally is yeah. top level. Happy, happy would, would be in this, in this space, I think happy for, for the first two seasons maybe even particularly the first season had had, had the best season i think it matured uh, incredible range of passing pass here pass there pass even here mm -hmm. uh, and you see you see that pass being such an important pass now in modern football a pass that goes into 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 giving 
immediate scoring possibilities yeah. from, from 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 the dodge, you know, and happy happy was was very very good at that. Marcelo Marcelo we had on the left. If we had if we had happy on the right, we'd have Marcelo, but not always. Yeah. And sometimes we had happy with uh, Nyasha or happy with Nyauza, and then we we even moved to uh, because Nyauza was was more of a right back, and once we we moved him in here. Uh, and it was a little bit of a fight at, at the beginning but because he was he, he felt more comfortable here but but because we wanted to play we wanted to play here we wanted to play here and and by the way anyway mm. the the opponents was were forcing us to play here here The opponents were forcing us to play here. Yeah. So because the opponents were already forcing us to play here, we, we knew that the, the qualities needed here is speed. Yeah. But speed, not just speed of, 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 of that, to chase balls that come over the top like we've spoken about because yeah. you've got 30, 40 meters, 50 meters behind you. But you also needed speed of, of, of reacting because yeah. there are times when you would have possibilities of ball not being covered and the distance to go and counter press and high press would be would be there or the picture would not allow because maybe you would have you would have possibilities of a picture like this for an example yeah and and that that bit of counter pressing would leave you exposed to 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 a picture like that and they are so so instead of maybe jumping into counter pressing once you maybe have tried to play the ball that's intercepted and the center back now receives from the goalkeeper and maybe the distances don't allow you to jump out because by the time you want to jump out then people escape the press so 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 the ball would not be covered yeah. and you'd have a high line so you needed the possibilities of players to see this picture a little bit earlier, re react and not have the space available yeah. for that ball to go behind you yeah. but rather still have that and and then you still have possibilities of, of of still needing players that are very very strong in the air to compete for the ball and and Yauza fitted that 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 profile so we moved him into into a centre back position and and uh, even Micho gave him the nickname Otamendi <laughs> once he was playing here because he, he he had all the the qualities for a top centre back he was comfortable on the ball relatively so he was fast he was aggressive and yeah. and and, and uh, uh, even competent aerially very strong. Yeah, uh, Nyauza has football qualities of a centre back that I like. Mm. Uh, um, the football qualities that I like, you know. Mm. Uh, but but there's is is there's more to football than just the football qualities, yeah. you know. It's, there's more to football. But anyway, then at right back we we had um, Mtogozi Sitube. Yeah, who was not a fan favorite, and when we gave him an opportunity, he made a lot of mistakes initially. But he grew into the position. He's a good kid and someone that you could coach and and help to improve. Had a lot of po potential, but but and the capacity to get here was was incredible. Yeah. The 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 only thing was mm, was the, the, ball. the ball into the box, and yeah. and we worked so hard on trying to improve the output. Yeah. You know, uh, but. But but a, a player that was was had a lot of potential, and I think uh, maybe we didn't do enough maybe to 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 together. And I mean, when I say together, I mean the player and us, the coaches, to, yeah. to get him to be at a better level. You know, yeah. we had Mayela at uh, at left back, um, and um, again one of the players that we found, and we said this one has a lot of potential. And 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 even similarly to Nyauza, I thought that uh, would 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 be better suited to a, a position like this. So it's a left centre, left centre back in a back three, maybe. Back three, yeah. But maybe even a left centre back in a back two. Yeah. Uh, but but this this would be less complex for him. I see it. This would be less less complex for him because this this has mainly controlling this type of area which then also puts him in a space that he's more familiar with yeah uh, where whereas he would know that this this area behind him would be covered by by a center half yeah do you know what i mean and and he wouldn't have to worry too much about that when he would have to unfold but at uh, at center half when in a back two there's there's a huge huge 
predicament when an eight maybe takes wing play yeah. and you still have a striker here. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So so the, 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 the possibilities are sometimes maybe not having the fullback unfold yeah. uh, so that you can keep the center occupied and, and then if there is a movement from, from deeper positions then it's a bit easier but it depends also on what the picture looks like on the ball side you know yeah. and, and where everyone else is in relation to that and, yeah. and, and how how the ball ball is is it covered or not covered is it uh, is it is it is it a, an, an attack that says we've, we've we've lost possibilities with players that need to recover positions and and recover the pressing yeah. but the 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 reality is he 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 was he was very important for us yeah. extremely intelligent comfortable on the ball and also had a very good uh, output in, mm. in these type of areas his, his crossing abilities uh, you know was very good and aerially very strong mm. very strong f- especially for set pieces you know yeah that near post he, he was a he, he was a master at that yeah. so so we did we did and and probably the best time of of my coaching at pirates was when we did play a back three but maybe we'll speak about that a little bit later because mm-hmm. there was things that we we developed within that system of a yeah. back three that i still feel were not 100 percent uh, conceptualized and so seen on the pitch because it was something we could still develop. It was, yeah. it was incredible how we played that back three and that formation. It's a pity we played it in two games and in both the games we drew nil nil against Arrows and one one against Amazulu, mm. and then we discarded it because it, because we were not scoring enough. And, yeah. then, and then we changed to a back four again and and the structure that we normally play, but but. But we we couldn't survive. Uh, we couldn't survive because we we started conceding more. But anyway, that's yeah. a talk for another day. <laughs> so we had we had Musa, yeah. and then we had Tolam Lambo. We were we were very strong yeah. in control. Yeah. But but we could also have a Ben Motswari in that area who helped us with counter pressing and possibilities of regaining. And sometimes we played Ben as a as an anti ten uh, in games like against Sundowns. I remember we had we had Ben we had Ben sitting on on Thompo. Yeah. Because we knew that when the ball was built up from Adisha and it would come to the side, to Anele for an example, when, when the build up happened on this side, we knew that the next pass is coming to Frompo. Yeah. And and then the next pass from Frompo is coming is coming let me rather use the right colours. Yeah. Because I think I'm using the wrong colours. Um yeah. I'm I'm using yeah. And so red, red is the blue. opponent. Red yeah. is the opponent. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm just jumping from color to color. But yeah. yeah. So you knew that when the pass comes here or comes there, if you go aggressively to close that angle, and you don't want the pass to come in here, you want to force it central anyway. Yeah. You you needed a Ben Mutsuare intensity bite yeah. and defensively a lot more stable to be able to to help you recover balls and to press better. So there were moments where Ben would play as an anti ten and would still have Trompo. I mean, we'd still have uh, Ola and and um, and uh, Musa in 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 this space, but and then we started going into that type of possibility with 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 Musa Deepa a ten ten, and uh, depending on who you would have in the space, but but this was better for us because we could even put a Mamela here, yeah. who who him 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 lodge. Coach, so how was your um, relationship with, with, with Coach Mitchell because when I look at your time at, at Orlando Pirates you know, you were one of the first assistant coaches who were very involved you know, personally I'd, I'd never really seen that in South African football where I'd see an assistant coach who was yeah. very involved, but you were very involved yeah. how was that relationship like? No, the relationship was very good uh, uh, and and um, was good because of his personality, and there's a lot of there's a lot of. Talk. I mean, I was in Uganda now. I spent I spent a lot of time with Mitchell, mm. and I know there's a lot of people that say this and say that, but uh, everything was done within the confines of 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 portfolios. Number one, number two, also of the responsibilities that we got given because we were. We were called into a meeting and it was very it was laid out very clear what was because from the start when I joined Pirates the 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 the, the turning point was what we had spoken about with mm-hmm. regards to how this thing would go into the future. And already Mitchell laying the ground to to manage the team a little bit more because yeah. and anyway 
he was way better than me in terms of man management. And I think when we lost Micho in that season when he left, uh, we lost someone who was very important for us mm. uh, because we, we, he he could manage the group better. He 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 knew which buttons to press, like calling Musa Musalino and <laughs> yeah. Lodge. You would call Lodge Nyoso and Memela. He he had a way of of managing the players mm. um, and he was very very good at that and mm. one of the things that I learned from Mitchell was 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 the importance of managing people and and having people around you that 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 like to be around you yeah and 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 and, and people loved to be around Mitchell mm. uh, but also Mitchell also realized that that uh, one of my strong points is, is is from a tactical perspective and from a preparation and even the club uh, then put 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 that clear to to give us these responsibilities, and sometimes with with emotions and also with 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 this youthful exuberance that you get rid of as you grow older. Yeah. Uh, to 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 people who didn't understand what was happening within the club, mm-hmm. it maybe it maybe looked in a in a different way. But uh, would I change my behavior and and the things that we we did? At, at Pirates and the responsibilities and the way uh, the club played and 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 uh, the relative success that we had, would I change? No, I would not do anything different. I would keep the things the way they are and still learn what I learned, mm. and and still play the role that I played the same way without changing anything. And yeah. but but that was because Mitchell was that type of person who also was not. Uh, insecure about his responsibilities, his role, and 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 more than anything, when people around you succeed and thrive and 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 and, and enjoy the working uh, with you and within the organization as a leader, uh, it points again to you as the leader and, and the type of personality that you carry in in allowing people to be the best versions of themselves, even if it means that they become more important than you. Mm. But because you've got this assurance and you know what you bring to, 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 to the institution, to the environment, you are able to still allow them to thrive. Mm. So the period then comes and um, you then find yourself in, yeah, yeah you know, and um, the big, the big moment, you know, what, what was that like? And um, especially upon um, the whole idea of you taking on this role now. What was that like? What were the conversations like um, with the chairman? No, but you see, the challenge with 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 the transition was how it happened. Mm. And I must tell you, it was it was a crazy period for 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 preseason and the beginning of the season because it was just everything was just a mess. Mm. Our preseason, not not a lot of people know how disastrous our preseason was. Mm. We had challenge after challenge and and and, and uh, problem solving after problem solving from day one when we returned. And um, uh, I remember some of the discussions with Micho in private and and how we would be so frustrated with some of the things and even he was so and you can and as I say said even earlier, uh, Micho was the glue, the energizer. Mm. He was the battery because he he brought this jovialness to the team and 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 this good cop bad cop sort of and mm. now you can just imagine when the good cop is now frustrated yeah. and you need the positivity around him and. And so the, the, the preseason was, 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 was probably the worst I, we had while I was at Pirates because the other two preseasons were, were magnificent. And this one, for some strange reason, was just problem after problem. And I think if you look back, we were already set for, for something that was happening already. The, 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 the universe was communicating. Yeah. And then we went on to, 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 to start the season and the beginning was, was shambolic. You know, we, we lost 3-0 to Supersport in Bombella and it was, was a terrible performance mm. with own goals and it was, was a mess. Uh, and, uh, and then after that match, uh, I remember even for that match, Mitch was, was so distant from the team. Mm. And um, we, then, we then fast forward to come back and we come back and and then Micho resigns on a Friday, and on Saturday we have we have uh, Highlands Park in a cup game, you know. So so my goodness, if it was not uh, 
preset to be a baptism of fire, then I don't know what you can call a baptism of fire. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't have had it any other way mm. because I think I am what I am today and I, I'm as uh, better coach, as better as a human being because of that period was, was a fantastic six, five, six months of of my coaching career was yeah. was incredible. The, how it stretched me, how it challenged me, how it, uh, it made me stronger, mm. you know. And and uh, I I am extremely grateful for that period. Mm. And even though, with a lot of people looking back, they would think uh, it was not as successful as many people think. But I I remember that. A lot of the problems were solved, and 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 the identity was very very clear, and with everything that was happening, to still get the team to be sitting in sixth position before fifth or sixth position before uh, the new coach then came in and took mm -hmm. over in December, uh, I look back on it as, as as a period where I learned so much. I remember uh, we lost to Highlands Park in the in the cup game one nil. And then there was a bit of a, a break and we had time to, to train a bit yeah. because there was a FIFA break coming and and then people were already saying, no, our team is bad and it's, it's, it's conceding too many goals. We then went to this back three formation that I was yeah. speaking to you about. Yeah. And for, for two games, we played Amazulu and we played Golden Arrow. Steve Compello was the coach and we drew those games and we stopped conceding. Mm -hmm. And then the talk was, ah, yeah, you're, you're not scoring. scoring. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we had another break. We fixed that because mm -hmm. we worked so hard on, 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 on some of the schemes and the patterns to try to make the the offensive game of the opposition a little bit more predictable for us to be able to get mm -hmm. more balls higher up. And we knew that if we could do that, we could create a bit more problems from that so from those situations. And then we also had to work a little bit on our offensive patterns, which we worked so hard on. And and then we started scoring, but yeah. then then while we were scoring, we were we were we were conceding, yeah. and games were four three and three two. Yeah, I remember. And and even then, you you would hit if 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 there was a an award for the team that hit the crossbar the most times, would have been that Pirates team. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you could win the league by just hitting crossbar in every single match, we would have won the league hands down. Yeah. And and uh, but football would have it that. Uh, the results maybe were not the best results, and, mm. but they were not as bad as everybody makes them out to be. Yeah. And I understand that, you know, mm. I understand it's because it. it's part of football. If the results are not good and there's no okay results, there's no, there's no in between. Right? Results are either good or bad, and then that's football. But but I understand also that uh, being a young coach and, and, and the first black head coach of Orlando Pirates in its history, a South African. Mm -hmm. uh, in its history, the youngest in Pirates is history. I understand that that also comes with uh, other yeah. uh, other elements that come into our society, unfortunately. So, mm -hmm. so the narrative had to be changed a little bit to say, ah, oh, he's struggling. He's but but a lot of the exams, if you look at them, the playing style, and that is one thing that that coaches can promise is performance and playing style, and I think. We were very, very clear. Yeah, and I and I still want someone to show me a game where we did not play the way we we. I mean, Maritzburg, a game we should have won. I remember at Orlando Stadium we we drew, but I remember Kabilo Lamini with a sitter one on one with the goalkeeper for an example to yeah. beat, and we miss. You know, uh, Lodge against Kaiser Chiefs, we were one man down. Uh, in the Telcom Cup, yeah. uh, and the and the chances we were creating and 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 producing were very similar. Yeah. So from that perspective, I think we, when they said we were conceding too many goals initially, we solved that problem and then we were a bit stingier. Then we were stopped scoring and then we had to solve that problem. Mm. And then we, and then I think, I don't think I would have solved the rest defense problem had I still been part of that. Yeah. So, so being removed from that and having an opportunity then to study the game and to travel to Melwood and to be at Liverpool and to check, I think that also helped me to, 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 to improve my knowledge of how I want my teams to play. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that was a huge problem for us at Pirates was defending while we were in possession of the ball. Yeah. And even though I, I understood what it meant at that time, but, 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 but studying it, yeah. Because that was one area that I felt let that Pirates team down was mm. our rest defense. 
uh, and we were we were we were very vulnerable when we were in possession of the ball. Although it was important for us to be in possession of the ball yeah. because because we had the responsibility to try to win the games. Yeah. But the structure wasn't right, yeah. and the rest defense structure wasn't right. But but uh, I got time to to go to England and 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 get closer to to people in the game deeper mm -hmm. club and watching how uh, Liverpool was set up there as defense. And then uh, Thomas Tuchel was at uh, PSG, who I think even to today is the master of rest defense in the sense because structurally his teams very seldom concede on counter attacks, mm. and. Um, that that was something that I learned from that period to yeah. advance and it, it helped me to be to be a better coach. Yeah. And today I think I'm I'm, I'm much better than I was mm -hmm. when I was at Pirates. I'm much better as a person, a better human being. Mm -hmm. and, 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 like and, and 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 way better as yeah. a, as a as a coach. And I think I, as I always say, if I can't be a, a good human being then I don't want to be a good coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be a good coach because I'm a good person also. Yeah. But that time at Pirates heightened the desire of, of, of going through a lot of things around the team and, yeah. and in the background yeah. that, that made me say, I, I don't want football to change me. Yeah. I want to stay the person that I am and maybe even become even, an even better person. And, and that's what Pirates did for me. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm eternally grateful. I call it the Harvard the Harvard of my, 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 my coach education, my journey. Uh, that was... That was that was my graduation period, and it had it had to be difficult yeah. because I was studying a doc doctorate. Yeah, I was I was I was studying to be a specialist in 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 this field, and and as you go your third year, your fourth year, your fifth year, your graduation year in any degree or qualification is your hardest mm. because that's when you have to apply the theoretical plus the practical on the pitches. Yeah, on on on, on your work. And, what you study, yeah, and and the the period where I was given the responsibility to be head coach was was my graduation year, yeah, and and that's when my practicals were coming, and and uh, I think I I passed that, mm. I passed that because I'm able to look back on it and say. Uh, from from a lot of these exams and some of them were even off the pitch. Yeah, I think I passed those. Yeah, I failed a few. <laughs> I failed a few, and yeah. I took my losses. But I think those losses are the ones that have helped me to become a better person because I've learned a lot from those. Yeah. Given that, do you think you were given enough time? No, but it's not important what I think because mm -hmm. because football is about results, mm -hmm. and the results were not consistent enough for me to be given more time. More time. Yeah. Uh, the the only sad part with, with with the Pirates' time was was that the coach was 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 hired five weeks before he was announced, and uh, but but that's how football works. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and you have to understand that, you know, and uh, you have to accept that certain things happen in a, in a, in a certain way uh, and appreciate the, 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 the opportunity that you, you got given because uh, not a lot of coaches have been given that responsibility yeah. and not, not a lot of young coaches, black coaches who never play professional football get to be given uh, that enormous task of leading a, a, one of the biggest clubs on the African continent. I got given that responsibility. Mm. So you've got perspective, you know, you've got to choose how do you look at it. You look at it as, as a person that didn't get enough time. And if you if you look at it in that perspective, then maybe you have a, a more Stuck in negativity, the yeah, because mm. the the past is more of the challenge. But if you look at it as 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 an opportunity that you got given, yeah. that stretched you, yeah. um, that uh, helped you to be be better, yeah. then you look at it uh, with a different pair of eyes and, and that pair of eyes is, it fills you with a lot of gratitude. Mm. And like Dr. Koza used to say to me, and sometimes I was, I think I was, I was immature at times yeah. not to listen to, to some of the advice because he gave me incredible advice and <laughs> advice that today still rings in my head. Yeah. But one of the things he used to say to me, he said to me, you'll grow old one day and you'll say what I know, I if only I know what I, I knew then, what I know now. 
and that was so true because if only I knew then what I know now, maybe a few decisions that I made w would have been made different. Mm. But but the reality is I had to do, go through that yeah. to be able to 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 gain the experience yeah. and to 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 take my losses so that I could prepare myself for the wins. Yeah. So the next step then is is, is quite an interesting one. You know, synonymous to um, Coach Gavin Hunt who sat here a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, and you look at and you look at the journey, and you look at um, uh, the amazing work you had been doing over the years. You had been in teams that have won trophies. You've been in teams that were doing really well, and then the opportunity for Chipper United comes up. What what what, what was that like? Was was exciting because I was I was I was frustrated. Uh, I had six months left with my Paris contract, and I, and I, and I was talking to Dr. Koza almost every single day, and he gave me an opportunity to travel and to 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 take a sabbatical, yeah. which which I'm also very grateful for because mm. that allowed me to study the game, you know, yeah. and uh, get refine my my methodology because. Only then, a lot of what I was working on was a lot of the experiences at Sundowns in the youth and the influence of the Johan Cruyff coaches and, and then what I study and I see in games when I watch Man City and I watch all these top teams and with top coaches. And and then we you develop into a space where you are now itching to get back onto the beach <laughs> yeah. because, because this is your life, that's what you want to do. And there were a couple of clubs that came calling, and uh, uh, Dr. Koza was gracious enough to allow me to 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 go to to Chipa. and I was excited because uh, in the short term I wanted to to get back onto the pitch, and uh, the team was not in a very good position, but was also not in a very bad position. And uh, and then people say, but he failed at Chipa. <laughs> It's, it's it's crazy. I I read these things sometimes, and I say, my goodness. You didn't even get into the exam room. Oh, you didn't even. Yeah, we played one match <laughs> against Bidvest Vets, Gavin Hunt's team. Yeah. And we went to Bidvest Stadium, and yeah. we came out with a draw for Chipper United. Uh, a, a draw, nil yeah. nil, where even the first half we were extremely dominant until we had that injury to, to Mapanga. Yeah. And then we had to take Tertius into it was unbelievable how we played against Reds actually. Yeah. When we, we this is how we played and was 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 was, was crazy because yeah. we didn't have enough time to prepare for this match, but but we knew we knew we we, we, we could get something. Yeah. And the lack of a of a of a of a prof prolific striker gave us a lot of problems because 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 with with Gavin you know you know you know that the most important players for Gavin are his wing backs. Yeah. You know that for sure. And you know that there's balls that are coming in here. Yeah. There's balls that are coming in here. You 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 you've got to you've got to be ready for that if yeah. you play against Kevin Hunt. Yeah. You've got to be ready for that. And so so we 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 did something that uh, I I I don't think I've ever done before, and I, and, and, and I'm not sure if it would work again, but it worked for this match yeah. where we we changed and we put we put our wingers here. And and we said to Santi and uh, I think it was Keenan Phillips at that time. We mm. said, or oh, Nazir Ali. I'm not too sure. And we said, all right, you have to choose what you want to do. <laughs> we 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 planting our strikers here, so you have to come here and and you have to come here mm. because because Gavin doesn't doesn't like this picture. Mm. You know when there's there's a striker here and the centre back comes out because then this is open. Yeah. You know. And so what we did was we had a we had a diamond in the midfield. It's unbelievable. We played with a false nine and we played with two strikers in a four four two diamond like yeah. this. And we put William Twala here, who was a thorn in the flesh mm -hmm. then the whole time, because William has this possibility of coming in between and into the ten and half space and in between the lines and 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 very smart William Twala, very yeah. very smart, good intensity and this role I think. Uh, suited him very very well. This yeah. ten half half nine half ten yeah. uh, sort of role, and then we had uh, Uteshas on the left yeah. because we wanted we, we wanted even sometimes the possibilities to play this ball. Oh, yeah. and it's easier to get it with the left foot than to get it with the, the right foot. Yeah, yeah, the diagonal dodge, 
and Tertius was so important for us because we, 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 we then overloaded the midfield and not only were we giving them problems here, yeah. but, but we were giving them huge problems here because, mm-hmm. because they only had the two in Tabang Monare, I think, and uh, I'm not so sure, I think Co- with, uh, Cole Alexandra or maybe even Changasi, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. But they had, they, had, they had that double pivot in a 4-5-1, in a 4-4-1-1 sort of, sort of structure where they would have a leading striker and, and then they would have obviously a 10 that rushes in to create these possibilities yeah. to, 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 get, to go wide and then to deliver crosses and sometimes even, even, even double wide, uh, to be honest, uh, to be able to, 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 get, to get balls either from here into this position or from here yeah. into this position. So, so once we stopped killing that, we stopped, we, 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 no, we stopped killing this. We, they stopped going, yeah. And now he he had nothing. Yeah. So we were extremely dominant. Yeah. Extremely dominant because because once they couldn't come up and 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 we had that. We we then had enough numbers in here. So we 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 asked we asked William to drop a lot. Yeah. And 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 especially when we 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 knew that his centre backs are attaching centre backs. Yeah. So 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 William in that position was 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 big for us because yeah. we could get we could get uh, uh, um, Gattuso, um, um I call him Gattuso, Komani. Yeah. You could get Komani on the ball and, yeah. and Komani one 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 interesting attribute about Komani was even upon regains the first pass was always this. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of midfielders in South Africa have that. Mm-hmm. A lot of midfielders in South Africa have they win the ball for an example in areas like this and 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 the first option is is to receive and stabilize, or receive, yeah. and stabilize, or receive and stabilize. Yeah. But o- o- Komane had had this incredible capacity to win balls, and and, and 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 offensively, yeah. and put your team in in very very good positions, you yeah. know, and 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 from even deeper positions, you need that, you know. Yeah. And he was not a deep line playmaker. He was more of a central midfielder that played in in deeper areas. Yeah. But but but. But gave the team very good balance, and 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 at Bitvest we 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 caused a lot of problems to to an extent where Gavin had to then remove the wingers and 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 add a centre back because because this ball was 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 without that centre back this ball was a problem yeah and this ball from even Kolani to the other side to 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 TK was a huge problem so we yeah. put our strikers we put TK and we put. Uh, I think it was Rosaic, if I'm not mistaken, Ramaldin on the side. Mm-hmm. Rosaic, and, Rosaic and TK were, were, were our wingers, but, yeah. but incredible ability to, to be able to work and put pressure on the fullbacks and, and not allow uh, them to, 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 to deliver balls. And then what killed us was when we had to, we had to take Mapanga out and we had to move uh, 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 Tesha yes. to left back. Yeah. And we struggled a little bit with, with, with the control in the midfield. You know, and, yeah. And 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 then he 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 moved and he played he placed an extra centre back, which then which then allowed allowed any one of the centre backs. For an example, when William did that, which was a big problem for them to yeah. be able to attach. Mm. But even even with another centre back, that movement was could be occupied. Yeah, do you know what I mean. Yeah. So so even if even if it would be this one, but that that it, what or whatever run you would have to make whether from this side or whether from that side, behind or in front, would always still have the capacity to be dealt with because you yeah. still had two, yeah. even with one dropping in and, 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 and putting a little bit of pressure on that. And then they put a lot more pressure, uh, they put a lot more pressure on, on, on the two midfielders then it was easy to put more pressure on our two central midfielders with their central midfielders because because now this is covered a bit better with yeah. that, with that third center back that is now able to drop into the midfield and, and put pressure uh, in between the lines and and they had a better coverage and dominance of the pitch but uh, before that we had we had we had a lot more dominance and we covered the pitch a little bit better than them and and uh, it was a very good game it's a game that 
Till today, I still analyze. I, yeah. I, I still watch that game, especially the first 35 minutes. I, th I think from a tactical perspective, it was, was, was incredible. Yeah. So you do mention... So one game, yeah. one game, <laughs> not defeated at Chippa. Uh, one game, no loss. Uh, then COVID happened. Uh, I'm not so sure how much of a, of a failure that is. <laughs> I think I left Chipper United. I left Chipper United as the only coach that finished his contract <laughs> and finished his contract undefeated, <laughs> and that's a failure. It's a, you know, it's always different. No, the, narr different the, the narrative sometimes is 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 what is what suits the people. Yeah. The people want to have a certain narrative that suits them and yeah. that makes them feel a lot better about themselves. Yeah. And so if that makes a lot of people feel better about themselves, then I'm very happy to support it. Yeah. So you then find yourself um, in a situation synonymous to when you're at Sundowns and uh, your contract was coming to an end. Similar situation now at Orlando Pirates. How does the opportunity to go back to Sundowns well then I'm a chipper and I'm I'm frustrated because it's COVID and I was ex I was I was working and enjoying working at Chipper. Yeah. I must tell you, it was a beautiful club with very good facilities. Mm -hmm. you know, training pitches, unbelievable. The, the stadium is top class. The gym, incredible. And um, and a club that if they if they if they give you support and 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 yeah, I think there's a lot of possibilities for successes at that club. Yeah. Uh, and even Chipan Penges is someone I like a lot. Uh, and he's a person that I think uh, loves his club a lot also. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, maybe he's misunderstood, but the reality is uh, there's also a lot of things around that club that does not allow for coaches. Of, of course, you can see it. It's not just one coach, but if it's seven, eight, nine coaches, then you have to start asking yourself a lot of problems and yeah. questions. But Chipper was good for me because it gave me a time to be closer to the beach. I, pro I promise you, maybe within the six months that I was there, I probably only went to the beach twice. <laughs> and maybe only after three months it, uh, yeah. did I actually even go and swim in the beach. Yeah. But but it's a, it's a, it was a it was a fantastic fantastic yeah. time for me. Uh, uh, we did a lot of training in the lockdown and 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 work, and I was really looking forward mm. to 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 finishing the season with with uh, Chippa United. But then uh, uh, Coach Pizzo called, and and as I was negotiating a new contract with Chippa United. Um, we were then in discussions with with Sundowns and uh, uh, the possibility to 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 finish my contract at Chipa and then move to 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 move back home was 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 open and then of course uh, having also enrolled for my UEFA B coaching uh, course, I wanted to to focus more on my my qualifications and 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 therefore I took I took the chance to go to to Chipa. Yeah, to leave Chipa and go to Sunnowns to be an assistant again because I felt being a head coach would 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 be a big problem for me with my with my badges. Yeah. But I took I took that position because I wanted to to finish my 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 badges, you know, and and devote a bit of time to my qualifications and my traveling overseas to yeah. to, to to study. Um, but uh, I. I was still also speaking to Chipa United because they were very keen to keep me. Yeah. Unlike what some of the reports said, you know, and uh, and even then, I left Chipa at the end of my contract. I didn't leave Chipa uh, prior to my contract finishing. It was a six-month loan deal, and I finished the six months at Chipa. Yeah. And when the team went into the bubble to finish the season, that's the only time I didn't travel with the team because I felt it was necessary for the team to to. To prepare with the coach that mm. they would have next season, you know, and and once I had made up my mind to to rejoin Sundowns, uh, which was at the end of of my contract at the end of June, I then moved to Sundowns and was part of the preparation to finish the season in the bubble with Sundowns. Mm. And how was it then, um, returning and um, walking back into the dressing room and? Um, being on the training pitch again with Coach Pizzo, how how is all of that? A lot had changed, I must yeah. tell you. A lot had changed, but 
but a lot had stayed the same. A lot of people that I knew before in the office, in the club, had still been the same people. So an integration and a, and a, a, um, an, an easier sort of acclimatization was possible. Yeah. Uh, the players, the players was most of them were still there, especially the senior ones, Dennis Kennedy, Shishi Villa. You know those were still there, and uh, so it was not so difficult. Langa was still there, yeah. Trompo was still there, very important for the previous group. And uh, Coach Pizzo, Coach Mangobo, they were still there. Coach Wendell was still there. So a lot of the things were still, mm -hmm. but but the club had definitely changed. Yeah, uh, the things that were done. Uh, were not things that were used to be done, but you could see that the club was in a space where, uh, for sure, for sure, the profile of it had increased drastically yeah. since I had left, and and uh, the profile of the players and, and and the winning mentality was 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 second to none, you know. So it was good to be back. Uh, I was welcomed back by by the president who. Is is someone who I, I had al always stayed very close to. Yeah. Someone that I had huge admiration for, not just as a president, but even as a father figure, you know. And and I was I'm, I've been very very fortunate. And I must tell you honestly, this is one thing that I look back on, and I and I can say that I've got two football fathers, in Dr. Koza and and and, and Dr. Patrice Mutsipe, who are huge intellectuals in their own right, have incredible wisdom. And and uh, I've learned so much from both of them. It's not even funny. And and I count myself extremely fortunate to consider them my football fathers. You know, and maybe not even just football fathers, but but uh, yeah. without being biological fathers, I can call them my fathers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. I think I can be in a space where if if I truly need advice and support, I am sure that I can pick up the phone from and call Dr. Koza and still say I need advice on this. Can you can you support and assist? Yeah, and for sure, one hundred percent, I know that I can. I can still. I can pick up the phone at any hour of the day and call Dr. Patrice Mutsipe and say, "What do you think of this? What yeah. do you think about this?" And 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 and, and life yeah. life yeah. advices, you know, just not just football advices. And so, when you've been marinated around that, you 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 accept the the incredible blessing that has fallen upon you to be in the space or to live around greatness and, and, and for sure that can only propel you to a different space that 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 says the only understandable or, or acceptable outcome uh, for this journey is success and nothing else because the people around you have been successful. Yeah. So fast forward um, Coach Pito then gets um, the opportunity to go to Al Ahly. Yeah. But in that very same moment, also comes the opportunity. Yeah. Um, for you to become joint head coach with Coach. Um, yeah. Mangong. But before yes. this, there's an opportunity to go with Coach Pito to Al Ahly, which which was a spanner in the works because now you must. And and for me, it's always I've always been big on this. Is yeah. is, is 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 to 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 finish. And to be true to my contract, yeah. And now I've just signed a new four-year contract. A couple of months into the four-year contract, boom, uh, Coach Pizzo leaves. But but what what happened? Sorry, Coach. I, I just want to understand. Does he tell you personally? Yes. That, yes. Listen, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. He says he calls me and he says, Rulani, this is the picture. And I I've, I've, I I called you to come back through the club through. Uh, uh, Dr. Pet uh, Patrice Mutsipe, and we had numerous meetings, myself, Coach Pizzo, myself, uh, Dr. Patrice, uh, myself, Coach Pizzo, and Dr. Patrice. Yeah. I had one-on-ones with the president, I had one-on-ones with the coach, yeah. because I wanted to really understand uh, what was happening. And when they brought me back, I knew that it was not just the president that wanted me back, but the coach wanted me back. Yeah. And that for me was very important. Mm -hmm. And also that knowing, because Every single year, even while I was still at Pirates, Dr. Patrice Mutsipa would not miss a single one of my birthdays. I knew that I would get a text on my birthday from the president to say happy birthday. And that for me, 
was always also even one of the considerations to say, but you know, when people have been good to you and they love you genuinely, yeah. uh, there is a certain form of responsibility to repay that, repay yeah. the love, repay, repay the support and the appreciation. Uh, because life is not always about taking, 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 and sometimes you need you need to give back. You know, it's a biblical principle: as as you give, you shall receive. You know what I mean? So so even even as you receive all the love, the support, the appreciation, and 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 the opportunities, yours is to also give back. Yeah. You know, and 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 give back with equal amount of of of, of love and appreciation, yeah. and and you know. Yeah. And uh, and and uh, so when I got back and 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 everyone welcomed me as the prodigal son and <laughs> that's what the president termed it. It was it was exciting and yeah and 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 I think even to this day I look at it and I say I think I think I think I'm very grateful mm-hmm. that that God has a hand on my on my coaching career and just on my life. Yeah, you know that that my moves. Uh, may not make sense to a lot of people, but the reality is, if you look back, uh, pirates and and the the holistic view of of the journey there and the time spent there, for sure, for me, it's a win. Yeah. Overall, you know, mm-hmm. it's a win. Chipper United, my time there, at Chipper United, the, the the amount of players that I helped to improve and the mentality and, and and trying to change a couple of things in the short space of time, I think I think that's a win. Mm. Uh, and and then coming to Sundowns as 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 that point, you get to that point where you've got a four-year contract and and Coach Pizzo says let's go, <laughs> and 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 then you 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 sitting there. <laughs> And and Coach Pizzo has your passport. Yeah. <laughs> and you're supposed to be flying out the next day, but but the president calls you yeah. and says, Right, this is the situation. <laughs> it's co coach. So I said to him, But uh, Coach Pizzo has invited me to, to, to leave. Uh, he says, Okay, well, you have to make your decision what you want, but I, I'd like to have you and Manola to be co coach. But but the biggest, and not just because the president believe, believed in me and, and all of us. But the biggest turning point was probably the, the, the fact that I had just signed a four-year contract. Yeah. And I had just come back to, 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 to a club that I had already left yeah. for Pirates. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I felt inside of me that my own human values would not allow me. And even though it was a huge opportunity to go to, 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 to Ali with uh, Coach Pizzo, but but my human values of integrity, loyalty, and 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 and, and being and being a good person, yeah. you know, to be a good person, and to be yeah. good to to the club, to be good to Dr. Patrice Motsipe, to be good to the Sundowns fans who had who had reaccepted me, yeah. you know, because um, until today my relationship with the Sundowns fans is not the strongest. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I know I've got a lot of work to do to mm. to to appease them and to to. To make them understand that uh, I am fully with them, you know. Yeah. I want I want what they want, yeah. you know. And I and I am doing the best that I can every single day to to make sure that they get what they want. Yeah. Um, and I had hoped that that me not going to Al Ahli would have been the first step. Yeah. Towards towards appeasing the fans, yeah. you know and. And 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 uh, the Yellow Nation is 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 a special group, but it's a group that is is also a very difficult group. Uh, but but to 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 not go to Alakli uh, and and then maybe even turn down some some of the offers while I've been back from teams like um, Zamalek, for example, and and Simba and uh, so many teams even on the African continent. Yeah, I hope. I hope is, uh, is is strong enough to show that uh, you know I'm committed to this club and committed to 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 this goal of 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 trying to improve uh, this football club and trying to ensure that we 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 get to the position that uh, all of us want to see it and 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 that is that is not always easy to communicate to the supporters yeah except through actions and 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 I felt that I needed to do that. Mm. Uh, for my own reputation as a coach, but also 
also because, as I said earlier, I don't want to be a good coach if I'm not a good human being. And, mm -hmm. and being a good hu human being sometimes is, is also to, 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 to turn down very lucrative <laughs> possibilities for you to grow within your career. Yeah. For, yeah. For, 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 for keeping your, your human values. Yeah. Of honesty and integrity and when I said four years to the president it must be, be four, four years, years. Mm -hmm. and up until the club maybe he says no we don't want it to be four years and the, the first couple of years have not been good enough so mm -hmm. so you you want to invest as much time as you possibly can into making that four years a success and maybe even more yeah so turning down a likely was and turn, coach pizza in particular was, was very very difficult but i thought yeah i i, I and till today i think that is the that was the right decision to do mm. and and then how did how did he take it oh was no it? very difficult because i know it's like no no very difficult. no no very difficult it's not <laughs> it's not easy to turn coach pizza down yeah that that is and it was probably harder than saying to coach pizza I'm, I'm going to pirates yeah when i had to say to him i'm going to pirates that was hard yeah that was very very, very hard yeah and and for him to accept was it took him a very long time to yeah. accept that uh, because because and he rightfully so he felt uh, betrayed in a way you know mm. and rightfully so and I would have felt the same mm. but uh, then then turning him down to go to Alakhi was even bigger and so you can imagine if if going to Pirates had put a lot of tension between me and Coach Pizzo with our relationship. And yeah. we, we have a very, very strong relationship till today. Yeah. He's a mentor, he's an advisor, he's a, he's, a, he's a father figure, he's a brother, he's someone I, I have huge admiration and respect for. Yeah. He's someone I still communicate with, as someone that I, 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 I still believe has played a huge role in my, in my career. So therefore, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a coach that I've got incredible respect for. Mm -hmm. So, then the opportunity does come as um, co-coach. What was that conversation like, you know, and um, especially for us on the outside looking in, it's not something that we're synonymous with, it's not something that we, we are used to. Yeah. What was the conversation like with regards to how it would be structured? Well, there was a lot of in-depth conversations, uh, talks, but some of the talks should be kept a bit private because mm. there's a bit of detail in some of the things yeah. and, and how it then even even came up to a situation where we said or the president said in his own wisdom let's let's have it as a co-coach mm. and and uh, we had a lot of conversations discussions uh, with the president myself and the president Manova and the president and then the three of us together yeah uh, but I think uh, I think uh, we've done the best that we can to to try to make sure that it succeeds. And even when a lot of uh, people felt that it would not succeed, I think I think uh, it has been relatively very successful. Even though there's incredible room for for improvement, but the reality is, uh, I think. I think uh, we, we've put the team first in a lot of situations and, and we've tried to make sure that Sanons is, 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 is the beneficiary of, of, of this collaboration and, and the work that we try to do every single day and, and we put the club first and I think uh, that's what we've tried to do and, and, and in, in the future we have to try to continue to do because mm -hmm. The reality is uh, the club is bigger and, and, and far more important than, than any of us could be when it yeah. comes to football. Yeah. But of course there are things that uh, are far more important than, than football like uh, family, mental health, happiness, peace and, and those things uh, are far more important than football and, and up until they start to influence the football you still make football number one yeah uh, and 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 football being number one means that we have to put ourselves second and make sure that we sacrifice and push to make sure that the team succeeds and 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 and, and it reaches a, a greater capacity than than how we found it yeah so the season has just passed and on the domestic front you did the clean sweep yeah congratulations on that coach thank you we we, we, <laughs> we worked very hard and the team deserves the applause yeah but I want us to focus on CAF Champions League 
you know, because um, that is a that is a space that I can strongly see, you know, with regards to your energy towards that. That is something you really, really want to go back and win that, you know. So what was like this season like, you know, especially considering that um, you guys were playing very well, you guys were doing very well until you came up against Pedro. Yeah, it was a... The Champions League is very is, is very interesting. Uh, for an example, let me let me for the past three four years the pattern has been the same. And the Sundowns are get knocked out in the quarterfinals, mm. and we get knocked out in the quarterfinals by by losing and then drawing. Mm. And and for the last three f- three four years, the quarterfinals have had the same story, and that's that's why it's important to 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 understand that success has the same clues, mm. and so does failure. Mm. And the clues that we've had is that uh, when we when we finish on top of the group, we then go into the quarterfinals. We we travel away and we we seem not to get a very good result away, mm. and then we have to play a little bit under pressure in the second leg, and then we put ourselves in a problem position where we're chasing results yeah so maybe then the, in that in that story is also uh, an underlying message yeah and, and and that is for sure maybe the first thing to look at where maybe not so much in the group stages does the factor of playing away count but I think maybe more so playing away in the Champions League especially as the first leg, I think that there's something, there's a message there yeah. that we have to, we have to, we have to try to to get, and 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 we are we are already in the process of of, of, of studying, thinking, ch- checking, analyzing, and and trying to understand. But football is not a is not a one plus one is two formula sort of sort of sport. The dynamics change all the time. The influencing factors change all the time. The profile of the teams, the players, the coaches that are there changes all the time. And uh, it becomes very, very difficult to try to have a set way of saying this is the way to win the Champions League. But those that dominate that space also seem, from North Africa, also seem to have a certain understanding of, of, of the feeling and the terrain of mm. home matches and away matches. And, and then that also speaks to not just uh, the traveling, the, the, but also the environment that needs to be created. Yeah. And you, when you go to Lubumbashi, you feel it's a, it's a way. You go to Luanda, you feel it's a way. Uh, for an example, when, 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 when we scored the first goal, mm. the supporters for Petro were extremely important to, to galvanize the team and say, it's, we the home side, we have, to, we have to be stronger than this. We have to fight because, because that tie could have capitulated easily, yeah. especially after Mshishi had another chance that hit... Uh, that hit uh, the the upright, you know, yeah, the, post. the post. But but the the the, the fans were, were important, mm. and and I didn't feel that when we were at F and B, when when they scored first. Mm. Uh, do you see what I mean? Yeah. We, 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 I didn't feel that that the supporters made the game uncomfortable for yeah. for, for, for for Pedro. I didn't feel that, and and as I say, then it's got more than just the pitch. But it is an important factor, yeah. And and you is. see it even 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 for the final, yeah. Widat versus Alakhi. You see how important it was for for Widat to have yeah. that 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 support yeah. because that then it flips the script. Yeah, it definitely know? does. Because I was I was there that night at F and B for the second leg, and you sort of had the sense it was very nervy, you know, and uh, you 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 know and. You, you look at some of the chances you guys are creating, especially in the first half, you know, Peter, yeah, 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 yeah. some of the chances he has, yeah. um, you've got um, Shishi who doesn't manage to convert the penalty. So there's so many of these things. Yeah, which, but how many penalties has um, Shishi, um, Shishi scored? How many of those yeah. similar chances would you give to Peter, Peter on any yeah. other day? And yeah. you would put it in the back of the net. But because the game was was so important for the players yeah they needed extra mm. you know and not just from us but it's a and and that and that's where we have to get to yeah it's it's and I, and I was so happy when I, I heard our chairman address this point because it is a point that 
that I, I strongly believe that's 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 the one step we need to yeah. get in, to get into being 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 a, a top four, top two Champions League side. Is, yeah. is this feeling of you can't come here and beat us? Yeah. But that 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 environment needs to be created. Yeah. And and you hear a lot, even Pep and and sometimes Thomas and they say that, and sometimes Jorgen and it's it's a it's it's not so much with with the uh, Enfield to yeah. be honest, but. But you see, even for an example, where how COVID affected the yeah. big teams, and, and Liverpool, for an example, moved from in the in the season under COVID, moved from averaging just over two points per game at Anfield to less than one point five points per match at Anfield. Yeah. Uh, it's the stadium is the same. It's just that the seats are empty. <laughs> yeah, the dimensions is still if it's a hundred and eighteen wide and. And uh, it's deep by a hundred and mm. I don't know ten or whatever it may be. Yeah. Whatever is the size, the dimensions is still the same. It's the same. But but the feeling that is created around that uh, by the supporters makes makes a big 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 difference. To yeah. see this is the Enfield, you know, and particularly when you attack or defend the the cop side, side, you know, yeah. there's a there's a certain feeling, and then that pushes. And that's the same with Real Madrid when mm-hmm. you go to the Santiago Bernabeu. There's a certain feeling, and when the white flags are, 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 are in motion, <laughs> the amount of comebacks this past season. Marcus, you, you have a look at that, and you yeah. see even in the Champions League, yeah. you know. So, so uh, winning Champions League is 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 very very difficult, and has got so many other dynamics to it that is uh, is 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 more than just what happens on the pitch. Yeah. So, Coach Rilani, yeah. now headed into um, two of my favorite segments. Yeah. We've got best eleven, yeah. and then we've got coach's corner. Yeah. But with the best eleven edition, because um, you've been at Sundowns for a very long time, sure. Well, we'll I'll give you I'll give you two best 11s. The first best eleven, I want your best eleven of Sundowns. So in sure. all your time of being there, yeah. So the past, present, the best eleven. No, that you've uh, it's it, that one. It would be. You know, I must tell you, I've always I've thought about this question a lot. I've thought about if I were to ever be asked my best eleven, who would be in my and I'm, I must tell you I struggle mm. because because uh, <laughs> there's so many good players. Like I must yeah. honestly I must tell you as a youth coach, imagine as a youth coach, uh, how many top players I've coached in the academies. I mean Dino Glovo I coached at, at Platinum Stars. Yeah, Percy I coached in the youth, mm. uh, uh, and then you go on to. <laughs> I mean, I mean, in the midfield, we I've coached Musa Nyatama, yeah. Bongani Zungu, Ben Mutsuare, Kolam Lambo. Mm-hmm. I've coached even <laughs> Maleven. Maleven played for Black Poison. For mm-hmm. me, one of the best midfielders I've coached. Yeah. Uh, Jaiva Yoyo, who plays for 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 Black Poison, is is one of the best I've coached. You know, <laughs> central midfielders, and even though he hasn't played professional football, but yeah, to me, Mukhotsi for me is one of the best I've coached. You yeah. know, so. I've been very privileged to tell you the truth <laughs> to, to coach some top, top, top footballers, and and I must tell you, imagine, imagine having to choose. I've I've, I've tried. I must yeah. tell you, I've tried. I can never put an eleven out. You can't put eleven out. Very difficult. You can't put eleven out. Okay, but there's two players you mentioned there. Yeah. And um, you mentioned Percy Tau. Yeah. And you mentioned Mohani Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Two players that you're very close to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. So we'll start with Percy Tau. Yeah. Um, what is your guys' relationship like, especially considering you guys come from the youth development at Sundowns? No, uh, I love Percy. 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 Percy is my son, man. Mm. Percy is uh, Percy comes to my house and takes his hat off. He doesn't just enter my house and and it's okay. Uh, hat, big star. No, no. Mm. Percy is, is still the Percy that I had when I had in the academy. Yeah. Respectful, humble, uh, coachable, and very honest. Mm. Very, very honest. We have very good, honest discussions. When I left Sundowns, Percy was one of the first people I confided in. Mm. To give advice as to whether to to leave Sundowns or to to go to Pirates. Mm. Percy was one of the first, and him and Madisha were the only ones at Sundowns that knew that there's a possibility that I could leave. Mm. And uh, Percy, 
is is was one of the first that that I spoke to when I was thinking of going back to Sundowns. Percy, yeah. I was one of the first people that knew that Percy was, had an offer to go to Brighton. Mm. Uh, to when he wanted to come back to Al Ahly from from Brighton, I was one of the first, and I mm. gave him my opinion. When, and my opinion was a very honest opinion. Yeah, you know. And uh, but but yeah, was, uh, I love Percy's mom too. I love Percy's family. In fact, I love the brothers. I um, Percy's mom and I we we speak a lot, <laughs> and and even to an extent where I remember when he was in the academy. There were days where Percy would go AWOL and not go to church. And, and <laughs> Percy's mom would phone me and say, hey, you see, your son has started again. Hey, sort him out because yeah. me, I can't do this. So, so that's, that's how far we go with Percy. Very special play. He, yeah. he, he played a, a huge role in, in where I am as a coach today. Yeah. And then the, the second gentleman, Bongani. Bongs. Yeah. Yeah, Bongs is, uh, <laughs> Bongs is another crazy... But I, I, I try my level best to be the type of coach that I didn't have. Mm. And uh, part to that means also I had a coach in Tabo who, who was very close to his players, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, he got the best out of me by being very close to me. Yeah. So I try to be very close sometimes uh, and I'm very grateful that I've had uh, very, very strong relations with, with quite a lot of the ones that I've coached who are good people. Yeah. You know? And I've kept them in my life, and uh, these are people that I don't only consider players that I've coached, but I consider them friends, I consider them my brothers, and some of them, even though they are older than me, and some of them are same age, and maybe even slightly younger than me, mm -hmm. consider me their father, you know, and uh, I'm very grateful for that, because even a player like Bongs and a human being like Bongs is someone that has invited me to France uh, to meet the, 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 the sporting director of Amiens, and today, I can I can pick up the phone and speak to people in, yeah. in France. His head coach is someone that I still have conversations with about football and and what is happening. The sporting director is someone that has a uh, huge huge respect for me as a coach, and yeah. and that couldn't happen without bonds, you know. Mm. So, uh, but but generally players that I've worked with, uh, I, I I keep I keep very close to me because I try to 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 maintain that 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 space and. Players at Pirates, players at Chippa, as unknowns, and and now I got the opportunity to go to Uganda through Dennis Onyango. It was yeah. it, but but because of the relationship that I have with Dennis, so so uh, I'm very fortunate. You know, I'm, I count myself very fortunate that uh, a lot of the players that I've coached have had huge capacity, and because of the huge capacity, I've had the responsibility to to see them grow and to yeah. help them to improve, and because of that, that's fostered a very stronger. A relationship and one that that goes beyond. I was I actually I was saying to Bongani Zungu just yesterday. Mm. Imagine for how long we've we've known each other, and Bongani Zungu is a very difficult character, <laughs> uh, but Rulani is also a very difficult character. <laughs> so so we were saying and laughing about yeah. that yesterday to to say imagine how much effort it has we have had to put in to make sure that we maintain the relationship. The relationship, but. Uh, he's done very well for himself and uh, is someone also that I'm very proud of. Yeah. So, the last segment. Yeah. Coach's Corner. Yeah. Yeah. So, in this segment. Yeah, yeah. I need your top five South African coaches of your time. <laughs> and then, we'll start with this one though. It's a question. Given the opportunity, would you ever take the Bafana Bafana job? Not now. I'm very clear in my mind about Bafana, not now, maybe in the future, but may, but definitely not now. I'd love to finish my career coaching a national team and as an old man and yeah. <laughs> uh, and I coach every three months. Yeah. I think that job is, is, is okay for that, but yeah. I've got too much energy to yeah. coach every three months. Mm -hmm. I, I, it would kill me. <laughs> so no, no, not. In fact, I was in Uganda and live on TV. Yeah. They offered me the Ugandan job. <laughs> And I said no, but first is out of respect for Micho. Yeah, as, as a as a brother, as a friend, as a mm. colleague, as someone I worked with. I I, I mean, I don't think that's right no, yeah. to even entertain that type of talk because uh, he needs to be given time and 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 possibilities to turn the corner and improve. He's been there, he's succeeded, and and there's no reason why he cannot succeed even even beyond what yeah. he achieved before. And then. 
Uh, also because of my own personality, I don't think I have. Yeah. I don't think I have it in me to coach every three months. Mm. No. So Bafana, not now. Mm. But maybe when the time is right. Yeah. Uh, it's a possibility. You need to smell the grass every day. No, I need that. It, it keeps me going. It keeps. I. I. I think I would lose my mind at yeah. this moment in my career if I'm not on the pitch. I want to yeah. be on the pitch. I want to live with the team. I and die with the team. Suffer with the team. Yeah. Hear the team grow. You yeah. hear the team grow when you're on the pitch. Mm. You. 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 It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a living organ. Yeah, it's a it's a cell that you you got to feed every single day. You've mm. got to you got to be close to it every single day because otherwise, if you let go, it grows without you. Yeah, and when you grow, when it grows without you, don't be surprised when you meet a beast that is not a beast that you want. Yeah, but when you are close to it and you suffer with it, you cry with it, you yeah. celebrate with it, you, you hear the the quarrels between the players. Yeah. you live with it. Yeah, it's it's, it's easy to to help it become a species, yeah. a complete species that you can be proud of. Yeah. So I live on the pitch, small-sided games, I'm on the pitch. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing how this player speaks to this player. Yeah. I hear how this player, his tone changes when he speaks to this that player. player. Yeah. I hear when they celebrate because this one is scored and this, <laughs> and then I can manage even the dynamics within the group yeah. and I can, and I know how important this player is to this player and maybe the relations might not be very, very good, but I but I try to, to foster even better com communications or, or maybe when we have fun games, you try to put these players together and, yeah. and, and you try to build this, uh, this team and but if you are too far from it mm -hmm. and this is what I learned from pizza also if you are too far from it the the team can easily develop into into something that might not be what you want mm -hmm. because then it grows but it grows without your influence mm -hmm. and that becomes very dangerous yeah so so hence I said to you that the next generation of coaches in the next few years are going to be coaches that are very good on the pitch mm -hmm. and, and 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 invest a lot of time on the pitch but 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 I have to be very competent on the pitch. Yeah. Uh, and because a lot of the the success and failures now in modern football comes from the work that is done Monday to Friday on the pitch and not just over 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. The 90 minutes is just a, a means to <laughs> to test you for, for the work you've done and the studying that mm -hmm. you've you've made. But the reality is the 90 minutes is just a reflection of of, of Monday to, to, to Friday and the work that you put in. Mm. So, coach, I need your top five South African coaches. Sure, very difficult to answer that also because, <laughs> you no, know, it's, it's it's tough because uh, first I I I I've I've had a lot of lot of contributors to my career and maybe not they may not be the top five in in the context of what they've achieved in South African yeah. football, but they they can be the top five for me yeah. in in how they've influenced my career. Like yes. like Ellen Fries. Yeah. If I say top five, people say well, <laughs> top five for, for me. You, yes. Ellen Fries is, yes. is one of them. You know because of what I learned from him and the time that I spent with him. Yeah. Uh, Temba for me would not make, uh, but, uh, but Temba is is, is yeah. important for yeah. how I bounce off ideas and 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 what do you think? How do you? Michael Lofman for me for for one is is incredible, you know, uh, exceptional mind and 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 very important for me as a coach because mm. he doesn't always agree with everything that I say. Top five, yeah, me, but but in terms of what he's achieved in the game, not necessarily. Yeah. And then you have. Uh, Jomosono, for an example, who who is 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 family also, yeah. but but is a top coach also. Yeah. And then if you put him in the top five, it's ah, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's biased this thing, you know. So so I've got I've got no, honestly I've got I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've worked with with yeah. great coaches like Kevin and and, yeah. and, 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 and and Temba and Michael and 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 top top coaches. Yeah. But I've also seen and, and learned a lot from, from f even from a distance, like a Stuart Baxter, when yeah. I have coffee with him and yeah. I, I speak to him, a mid and top. Yeah. You know, these coaches are coaches that, for me, have played incredible roles in South African football, but yeah. may not necessarily uh, be everybody's top five. Yeah. But I would, I would presume that we've had incredible coaches in this country uh, and coaches that uh, have played their roles in, in shaping. Clive Barker would, would deserve a mention. Yeah. You know, uh, 
Steve Compello would deserve a mention. Pizzo Musimani would deserve a mention. Um, these are coaches that I've worked with and I've learned so much from, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, but the reality is it becomes so, so, so difficult because uh, these are also my colleagues, mm. you know, these are my colleagues and you don't want to be put in a situation <laughs> where you're naming a top five and, and, and now, <laughs> yeah, on five, yeah. on five, we're top five and, and uh, uh, so you think I'm not one of yeah. the best, but, but uh, I will tell you that uh, if I could, I could, I could, I could name a top five if I could, but the reality yeah. is I've, I've, I've learned so much from so many coaches yeah. that it would become very, very difficult to, mm. to just formulate a top five. And I, I know I'm being, I'm being uh, a bit difficult. Playing it on the fence. I'm playing on the fence and in yeah. between the lines, but, but, <laughs> but I hope you understand because, you know, no, even, I, I even totally with the understand. players, you know, you think to yourself, my goodness, imagine you have to choose a top 11. And you've got to choose between Dennis Onyang or Kennedy Mwini, Riyad Peters, uh, yeah. top. Ricardo goes for me. Yeah. Incredible goalkeeper, you know, that I've worked with. Wayne Sandilands, a astute professional. Yeah. Crazily, crazily, crazily devoted to his career. Yeah. And then I've got to choose the, the one out of that. It's difficult. <laughs> and then I've worked with uh, Madisha. I've worked with Happy Jelly. I've worked with uh, uh, Marcelo, who's now yeah. in Portugal. Nyasha, who's now playing in France at yeah. center half. And when we turned Nyasha into a center back, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and we said he's a top football player. People said no, no. But today we, you see, to you see, you see exactly. He's linked to Brighton. You see why we we built, we believed so much in him. Yeah. And when the club at a certain point we almost uh, sent him again on loan to Barocca, we said no, no, no. We need this guy. You know. Yeah. And uh, the only surprise for me is, is how well he's gone back now into into centre back. Yeah. And 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 I think having played, I mean, to central midfield, and I think having played at centre half, for for us helped his game mm. defensively improve. And, and I watch his games now in France. He's, he's a tank. He's a beast, strong, aggressive in the jewels and yeah. and, and 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 the like. And and and, and even the, the the usage of the ball. The relationship with with the ball and decision making in certain moments. Incredibly huge evolution from from Nyasha, but but imagine that you have to choose. You have to choose between Musa, Zungu, Bola. It's uh, yeah. even now some of the midfielders we have. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, you, how do you choose? <laughs> now you have AJ, you have River. You know, you have to choose between Shishi, Lodge, uh, Vincent Bule, Memela. Yeah. Very, very difficult. So, <laughs> so uh, they say blessings and burdens are cousins. So, yeah. so I don't want to carry the burden of having to choose a starting or a best eleven, even though I have a clear recognition and appreciation for the blessing that I've had yeah. to be able to coach some of the best players that yeah. this country has ever seen. Yeah. So no, Ms. Willa Jens, no, I'm not picking up the training <laughs> session. He coached the Dwarf Football. I didn't choose. He, one. Did, he didn't choose. He didn't, didn't choose. choose one. Coach Ulani, um, I thoroughly appreciate this. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you very much for it coming. It was good through. to be here. No, it was great to have thank you. you. Thank no, you. No, you know, and um, I think this is um, by far one of the most important, if not the most important episode you know that um no you've had, you've had some great episodes you yeah michael i've watched kevin's yeah. episode i watched kevin johnson's episode was was yeah. top yeah yeah and, and that's why i didn't do a top five because, yeah <laughs> <laughs> because because I, I i said kevin didn't put me in his yeah. <laughs> 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 But huge, huge love and appreciation for Kevin Johnson yeah. and uh, the role he played in my career. Yeah. I've got huge, huge respect for him. Uh, yeah. Top coach, top, yeah. top football coach, and I learned so much from him. Yeah, no, I, I truly, truly appreciate the conversation we've just had, and I can tell we can have no. conversations for hours and hours. And um, yeah, maybe who knows? Maybe but two guys, if you comment, maybe comment, <laughs> just maybe, maybe, and we can talk football and tactics only. Yeah. But two. yeah. Definitely. Coach Ulani, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, big brother. Thank you. Wishing you all the best going into the new season. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully going to Africa. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do our best. And, and wishing you all the best. Keep shining, keep growing. 
uh, keep expanding this. This is incredible. It's a fantastic resource for coaches and I hope you can continue with the great work and you can grow this child. Yeah. Live with it, suffer yeah. with it, go through the good moments, the bad moments, but stay close to it yeah. because it will it will uh, develop into a beast that, that uh, will surprise you one day. So keep up the great work and uh, to you and your team, we wish you nothing but, but the best. Hmm. You guys heard Coach Rulani saying these things to me. I'm joking. <laughs> Coach. Well deserved. I don't say things that I don't mean. Yeah. I'd rather keep quiet. So yeah. when I say something, it's because I mean it. And yeah. You're doing a fantastic job and I wish you nothing but the best and more successes. No, thank you very much. More episodes. And that was yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Leo. Signing out.